This video contains subject matter that may be offensive and disturbing to some people. If you are the type to require a warning throughout a video or show, let this message serve as your warning. This channel discusses the harsh reality of true crime. If this warning is not sufficient for you, consider a different genre and unsubscribe from my channel immediately. What's going on, Freakazoids? You know, I heard somebody else... Is Freakazoid a, a term that people use out there? Because I heard somebody talking about basketball. Uh, they actually live here in Portland, and they said, well, a lot of you guys are Freakazoids. And I was like, what? <laughs> Where'd you come up with that thing? Couldn't believe it. Yeah, I think that person watches my show. That's what I'm thinking. Because earlier he said, you guys are freaks. Then later he said, freakazoids. And I was like, how is that just random? Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> oh, is it? Uh, well, we, we invented it again here. I mean, I've never heard of it before. Good for you, uh, Miss C.D. Isaacs. Oh. Good for you. Well, um, I hope the storm isn't too bad down there in California. It looks like it's kind of dissipating a little bit. Uh, well, it kind of still looks kind of big there. I mean, there's the eye right there. Right? So it's probably going to be pretty strong winds. Not sure exactly when it's set to hit there, but uh, if you're out there and you live in so uh, Southern California, Cali Gal 3 and others, thanks Alley 79. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things, if it doesn't rain very much in a place, that when water hits it, the oil and the water, the you know, the grease and whatnot that's on the ground just makes it really slick for people. Yeah, you know, you know what's funny is they'll go, there hasn't been a hurricane in California in 50 years. This has to be global climate change. And then you look to ask yourself, but there was one 50 years ago. Was it global climate change there? Yeah, yeah, the thing is, it's the climate is always changing, you know. The question is, is how much man is affecting the change? You know, I like how it used to be global warming, and then they switched it to climate change. <laughs> be, yeah, well, climate changes, you know. I mean, that's why we had the Ice Age, and then it went away, and, you know, very, you know, different Ice Ages over the years. Uh, kidding me about what? Let's see, prayers for Mexico and California. My nephew is in South California, yeah. Now, you, you must not be able to hear very well uh, run the world. Your brain doesn't seem to work very well. You heard what I said, right? Yeah, try to, try to listen better next time. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Let's see, prayers for the affected by the now yeah, it doesn't, doesn't sound like it. I'm about to put you on timeout right at the beginning of the show. Um, yeah, that's, that's too bad, run the world. You don't run the world on this channel, I can tell you that. <clears throat> yeah, so, I mean, don't you think it's funny when people say that? They say, oh, yeah, yeah. See, I think there is uh, climate change, you know, and it's just how much does man affect it in a negative way. But it's funny how they say the last time there was a tornado, like one time there was a tornado in Brook, like New York. And they said, wow, the last one of these was in 18-something. Well, how come there was one in 18-something? You know, what happened then? 
You know, uh, they never give you an explanation for shit like that. Thank you, Kathy Frightenmaker and Don G. Luckily, we have really high earthquake building standards in California. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I wouldn't uh, doubt it that, uh, you know, our fossil fuels and everything going into the, up in the air have some effect on it. But there's, you know, the debate on how much, because every year or so you get Al Gore saying, oh, my God, in three years we're going to be under four feet of water, and then four, three years from now it's the same as it was. So these guys at least need to be accurate before people will take them seriously. Do you guys agree with that one? Thank you, Kelly Snyder. How about when they make these predictions? <laughs> Kelly Snyder said, enjoying the peace and quiet while my husband and son are in, what is it, uh, in Indy at the Colts and Bears game. Ah, cool. Thanks, American lady. And Kathy Chapin. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys for your generosity. It kind of keeps the channel going and allows us to do what we do. Yeah, so if you missed last night, we're actually going to... ...quiet while my husband and son are in India at the Colts and Bears game. Smiley face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the climate changes all the time, Christy. I mean, like, I remember when I was a kid, you'd have El Nino coming up, and then they'd say, Oh my God, look at the great white sharks are in here. And then, then they leave the next year. The, the climate, that's why they change it. The climate's always changing. I mean, do you, do you understand that? And I'm not a climate denier. Like, I actually think, you know, man-made stuff affects it. But why don't you, uh, when you're selling people stuff and you're trying to scare people the hell out of them why don't you be accurate about it why not say well we think in 50 years or so uh the ocean levels might raise a foot and this is what it would do instead you get people like al gore and the other ones talking about within the next three years the entire continent of so and so is going to be underwater and then it's not even close after that so wouldn't it be better for the cause to at least put out accurate information. They don't do that, though, because they want to scare the hell out of people so that you'll make this immediate change, irrational change, and it just does, isn't going to work. Okay, It's going to take many, many decades for uh, we're, us to get off of electricity and onto battery, you know, sort of, you know. The, the weird part is, is to get the energy to charge batteries, you have to also <laughs> do similar things. I mean, you, people go... Just use windmills. What if it's not windy, for God's sakes? You know? Uh, or, well, let's say it's cloudy for uh, in Oregon, for example, in the winter. There's no sunlight, basically. It's just cloudy every single day. There's no solar. I don't know, man. Uh, figure something out. Got to have some kind of a combination of the two. Uh, wean, wean us off of fossil fuels in 100 years or something. But to sit there and go, oh, tomorrow we're going to... And I know you didn't check in here to listen to my my thoughts on that. Uh, where's the YouTube? What do you mean 100K symbol? Uh, what, what are you talking about after all? You don't get a symbol. You mean this thing right here? This one? The uh, silver play button? That one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's right there. Is that what you're talking about? Let's see. So is it, a, is it offensive to you to not agree, think that we're just in this ca catastrophic situation right now? Right. Because uh, it, it, it isn't. All right. That, that's the thing. Um, you know, <laughs> just, God, it's so frustrating talking to pe people that are just gung-ho, you know, like, ooh, the climate, the climate. They're the ones that are, are irrational about it, okay? They are very, very irrational, okay? So, I like, like, run the world there. I mean, you can tell she's probably as a Greta Thornburg fan. 
you know oh wow Ooh, yeah look and listen to her that was a total joke you know the other day she was sitting outside and did the same speech to some random person walking by she practiced <laughs> now what's the diatribe about what what do you mean texas annie i don't get it let's see oh god run the world give me a break She's, I bet you that's all uh, so, uh, bogus, too. I just saw her the other day. Totally, nor, uh, completely just like a regular person doing her little uh, speech again to somebody who walked by. Well, what do you mean by diatribe, though, to Texas Annie? Isn't that a little bit negative sounding? Or? Uh, Blue is, he just kind of crawled into his little crate over here, so I guess not. Mm -hmm. I know. I mean, I don't care if somebody says, "Oh man, I think the it's when it's the way they react. They're the same people. If you don't say it how they want you to say it, it's it's sort of like the cancel culture. Oh God, oh God, you're so oh my God, and they get really angry and they unlike you and then they unsubscribe and everything like that. Hey, uh, run the world. How about you just get the hell out of here? All right. You're a, you're an embarrassment. All right, uh, get out of here. All right, let's see. Yeah, I'm sure she wouldn't be. Hey, thanks, Cali. Ooh, Cali Gal three, epic fail. <laughs> How's it going over there? Are you getting some rain out there at all, or? Yeah, I agree with you, WNC Granny. I remember when I was a kid, people would. It was global cooling. It was going to be the next ice age. Uh, we were getting an uh, inch and a half thick of ice every year here. And they said it was because of what, what's going on here, the uh, climate change, you know, whatever. It wasn't called climate change. It, it was weird. It was like global cooling, and then it was like, well, that, that went away, so global warming. And then I know what it is, this thing that makes it so weird it's global climate change. Yeah. I mean, why not just have something uh, somewhat normal, okay? Anyways, I'm just going to get on to the uh, topics now because I just wanted to talk about it for a minute. <laughs> you get, I mean, have something, have a standard term you want to call it and back it up with things that actually happen in the next year or so. And then people would start believing. The tactic they're using now is just a joke, okay? It doesn't affect anybody. Yeah. Okay, you guys ready? So, hey, good news. You got, if you saw the community post, the uh, Juan Carlos Garcia Rodriguez was arrested. And... In the case of an 11 year old girl is. sexually assaulted and strangled to death. Tonight, the man Pasadena police had been looking for is behind bars. He was captured in Louisiana and is now charged with capital murder. Devon. You know what I did is I, I downloaded all of the. I went over to Louisiana, Shreveport. It's not really a county, it's a parish, but. Uh, and I listened to seven hours, condensed down to an hour of of um you know police chatter whatever you want to call it and i couldn't hear it <laughs> i mean it was just wasn't i didn't hear it so i don't know where it uh i tried to go back i mean i don't know if it was last night or something they never gave us a time they just told us today at a, in a, you know when i saw it it was six hours before the article so that would have been you know like two o'clock my time but that would have been five in the morning their time so i went back from one all the way to like to 8 30 a.m and it wasn't there so i don't know you know i don't know when it was but i tried to find it for you guys i gave it an, i gave it a shot roming has been on the story all week he is live in pasadena with the latest on this high profile case steve on 
Well, Marcelino, the memorial here behind me at the main apartments continues to grow this evening as people are still trying to process what happened to 11 year old Maria Gonzalez here one week ago today. Now, Pasadena police say this is the man they were after 18 year old Juan Carlos Garcia Rodriguez. He was identified as a person of interest yesterday and arrested in Shreveport, Louisiana this morning. Since Friday, investigators say they've obtained more information linking him to Maria's death, including a key that was found at the scene of the crime belonging to a nearby unit where police say Garcia Rodriguez was living. People who live nearby are relieved tonight that someone is now in custody. I mean, honestly, it's a good thing because what a miracle. If that key wasn't found, I don't even know if there would be an arrest in this case. Because they'd have to somehow have found his DNA or something. I mean, it's just... He shouldn't be free at all. He needs to go to jail. He needs to, he needs to get what he deserves, basically. He killed, he killed an innocent life. Yeah, well, he's in, this is Texas, so it's not looking good for him, I can tell you that. Maria's father, Carmelo Gonzalez, released a statement this morning stating the arrest has brought the family some peace while also stating... May he be burdened with the... Hey, thank you, uh, Jeannie Gayagoy. Did I say that right? <laughs> and uh, good juju and Texas Annie. Full weight of the law for what he has done to my daughter. Now back out here live, Garcia Rodriguez is facing a capital murder Shreveport, charge. Louisiana. Charge and is awaiting extradition. I think he went back here. to where, you know, like the host family that... I, I already said it, Cindy. Thank you. So when we had the, um, let's see, I remember when he came over and he got sponsored, it was somebody in Shreveport, or was in Louisiana, they didn't say if it was Shreveport. I think he probably went back there, you know, he's trying to find a place to go. To Harris County, the only place he for now, live was familiar in Pasadena. with. Devon Roming, KHOU 11 News. Devon, thank you. Thank you, Tammy Morell. All right. So there's one article there. And uh, this one. Yeah. So uh, let's see. Please say Juan Carlos Garcia Rodriguez, 18, had been charged with capital murder in the death of Maria Gonzalez. Hey, look at this, Wild Mountain Time. I haven't seen you forever. Police previously identified Garcia Rodriguez as a person of interest in the case. Police announced Saturday that investigators were able to obtain information and evidence implicating him in the murder. A warrant was issued for his arrest, and he was taken into custody by police in Shreveport, Louisiana. He will be extradited back to Harris County. Uh, April... Aguire, a community advocate in Pasadena, spoke to Fox 26 on behalf of the family yesterday. Right, uh, we listened to that yesterday. And then there was a vigil, looks like. Tonight, an emotional candlelight vigil for 11-year-old Maria Gonzalez, the younger. Yep. Thanks for being with me these days. These tough times, you, you joined me. Saturday morning, Maria messaged. What a freaking nightmare. Jesus. That's all that guy had. You know, it was just sort of like him and his daughter against the all the odds of the world and probably, hopefully, was going to hope someday to become a citizen and then maybe be able to send money back uh, to the family and then bring them over or something. You know, whatever it was. And here it is. It's just some psycho goes in there and uh, just... Her father about someone sick. knocking on the door to their Pasadena apartment. When he got home from work about five hours later, he found her lifeless body, a medical examiner confirming the 11-year-old was raped, strangled, and killed. For this offense, he cannot be arrested because there's no warrant for him, but um, we really want to talk to him. Pasadena Police Friday releasing this photo, a man they're calling a person of interest, 18-year-old Juan Carlos Garcia Rodriguez, who also lives at the apartment. He was last seen in the apartment complex at 4 p.m. Monday. His whereabouts are not known. A key found at the crime scene works on a door where Juan had been staying. That key has been um, crucial in um, helping us uh, move this case forward. The 18-year-old, an undocumented migrant, illegally crossed into the United States this year from Guatemala. We've been asked several times over the last 24 hours um, if we had concerns that he was fleeing to Mexico. Um, I don't have any information that he is fleeing to Mexico. Um, he yeah, well, that was one from yesterday. 
Yeah, so, you know, that's good news. And good job for the police there. They blew it by uh, early, but they made up for it. So, you know, they all is forgiven, right? Um, they, you know, they absolutely blew it when they had the key, but didn't check it on any of the doors in the complex for three days. And in processing the crime scene, processing the crime scene, they go back over there and check the doors, and wow, here's a lead, but you already interviewed the guy, so he took off like a jet somewhere, and miraculously, uh, he was arrested in Shreveport. I wonder how close that is to... I wonder how he got there. Probably just took a bus or something. Okay, so it's just right there. And it's about 200, you know, probably 250 miles driving from there. You know, they checked the key in the door after they, you know, they collected the key at the time of the crime scene, you know, when they got there. And then they, they didn't check it into any doors for a few days while forensic people examined everything from the crime scene. Man, that's just... <laughs> Unreal, and they'd already interviewed him in the middle of that time, so then he was probably like, "Oh shit, I got to get the hell out of here!" And he took off. He could have been anywhere. Yeah, exactly. This is, I mean, another crazy moment. You drop, you leave a key at the crime scene. Really? <laughs> You've got the key to your apartment. So that you know what's weird about this? This is what happened. Watch, watch this. He goes in there and he does what he does. And when he leaves, he goes over to his own door and he tries to open it. He goes, oh shit. And he starts patting his his uh, pants going, hey, where's where's my key? And we don't even know. You know, he might have gone back in there looking for it and just didn't find it. Unless he didn't lock his own apartment when he left. Pretty crazy, pretty crazy. If it wasn't for stupid bumbling criminals, we may never catch the creeps. Well, I mean, it doesn't really matter if they had it on camera. I mean, I'm sure there's cameras in there. They have his key, and they have his DNA, and everything's matched now. But it seems like it'd be really... I mean, somebody didn't see him leave the apartment, too? I mean... <laughs> Who knows? It's pretty weird. Good evening, K me. So uh, looks like an arrest is made, and now it's up to the legal system. Uh, maybe law enforcement will have another press conference and release some information, uh, what the developments are, and then I hope they go full bore and even execute him if it gets to that point because this is one of those ones where he did it okay like for example if they found semen of his inside an 11 year old and he lived right there and he fleed that's one of the ones where it, it's not like oh we need to have the innocence project try to figure this one out okay this is one of those ones where you know he he did it Okay, there, there isn't a doubt about it. Let's see. Well, I mean, all I say, I'm saying about the, you know, we don't even know if the victim and her father were um, illegal aliens or whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter in terms of, like, here's this crime committed, and they solved it quickly, and that's great. The only thing is, is that the killer, um, anybody who's killed by someone who's in this country illegally is a, is a death that should have been prevented and could have been prevented. And I think that's just kind of obvious. I don't know where it's controversial or anything. It just is what it is, right? You know, you know what somebody actually said to me one time when I when I said that same argument? They said, well, they could have been killed by somebody else, Gray, you know. <laughs> what? What does that even mean? 
So it was just her time to die, and it would have been somebody else too? You sound really ridiculous at that point. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Let's see. Yeah, they think this is a paradise in their own. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I mean, it's just... Uh, here's what the truth is, everybody. Mexico has a ton of money from oil and all kinds of things. And fortunately, the leaders steal it. And they keep it for themselves. And Mexico should be able to be a pretty well-off, decent country, you know, where everybody has jobs and they're doing well. But they're not doing it. So for some reason, um, they're just coming here hoping for something when their own country could be taking care of them. Uh, wow what, Bally? What happened, Bally? What happened? What was the wow for? What happened? Man, did something happen? Did you? Are you in the middle of the storm? Explain, Bally. Jesus, what happened, man? Holy crap. Did you forget your name, too? Because <laughs> I did earlier. Somebody said, what's your name? And I go, you know, I forgot. And then I went, wow. So tell us what the wow was for, Bally. Go ahead. Uh, they have so much oil. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Dismal. <laughs> or dismal. <laughs> yeah, they, they have uh, so much money in Venezuela. And yet it just goes to the top. And Mexico allows the, you know, the the crime syndicates or whatever you want to call them. You call them uh, whatever you want. To, I just don't want to use the name. They just allow it to go on, and that is, you know, kind of their downfall. It's just ridiculous. Oh yeah, isn't that crazy, Bally? That somebody would actually say that. <laughs> That somebody, so you got to type in a full sentence because I think you, your comment was removed because they thought you were referring to, like, content. But you're saying, yeah, I mean, exactly. Uh, wow was for people saying that someone else could have been have killed them. Right. I thought it was insane. It was almost like almost like it was their lot in life to die. So therefore, um, it wouldn't have saved the life by not having uh, people cross the border. Right, I know. He brought her here for a better life. Yeah. I think 99% of the people that come over are looking for a better life. They're just not doing it legally. I mean, you know, it's like there's people who take the time and it takes years and they get over here and they do get here the right way. And so I'm trying to figure out why it's okay for people. It, it just People are just so willing to go, oh, great, we're all immigrant. Yeah, I know, we're all immigrant. Yeah, we all came from, you know, some sort of an immigrant at some point, right? Huh? Jeez, come on, KK. Let's not turn this into some weird. That's crazy. Uh, let's see. So I will, I will, Gen H, I hope we don't have to wait long. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I understand if, if you like somebody, but let's not turn it into like, some sort of rally. This isn't what, what I'm doing here. I think most people actually agree with what I'm saying right now. And I, I actually think it's like 80 or 90 percent of the people. However, when they get into conversations with people, they get nervous and like, oh, they don't want to say what, what they really think. It's just true. Okay. Um, what else is there? There isn't a nuance. Some way to spin it. You know, just is what it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a riot. Yeah. <laughs> Amber put Ugg in there. Yeah, I mean, the first thing that, that you do, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. It's actually, I mean, it, the, the topic, though, is irrelevant other than that girl shouldn't be dead. 
because at all. Uh, but then you can make an argument if they're not here legally, like they shouldn't have been here, and none of them would have met, and none of this would have happened as well, right? But uh, that person is a killer that got into the country. That guy is a psycho. This um, Juan Carlos Garcia Rodriguez, he is one of the worst type of humans there is. He's 18 years old, and he attacked an 11-year-old child. And there's no way in hell he was going to stop. I bet you anything, he probably, because, uh, you know, the travel to get here. So he's from Guatemala. He, he traveled the whole way. I guarantee you that that guy raped and killed other people on the way here. Because that's one of the known tragedies that happen is that females are basically trafficked and murdered and killed on the, on the journey to get here. Mm -hmm. channel and all the freaks thank you simply me I always want to say simplify or something but I, <laughs> mm -hmm. I think this guy is one of the, the psychos that traveled up and just had his way the whole time and when he got here he thought he was owed it again he was like hey I, I just want to do what I was doing before yeah well it doesn't work that way here okay because there's no way in hell that a guy, uh, that he didn't do something like this before. Like, he just sat around. He was just so worked up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the dad leaves, and then he gets into the house. He probably knew exactly what to say and things. Because somehow he got her to open up the door without him breaking in. I, I, I would bet you money that there are other dead people on the journey here because of that person. Uh, I won't be able to prove it, but I would just bet you money if there was a way to prove it. Welcome, Bally. Yeah, just insane. Yeah, he's still walking around, Mike. Yeah. But we don't know, you know, we don't know anything about his status or anything like that. They just think he's Hispanic looking. We, we don't really know. Mm You know, it's weird as I, I think I, well, I think most of it's still here uh, for the Delphi case. So now we're going to do some of those things where we uh, have a discussion about Richard Allen and the Delphi case and just sort of, I mean, mainly Richard Allen, you know, because we never got to our part two. We had all these other stories coming up. You almost had a cow? It's like... <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> God, I, that's such an old phrase. I had a cow when I went to... <laughs> I think that was like, what year was that, man? I think that was uh, early 80s, you know, or something. Maybe even before that. Thank you, Emerald Rose 63. Uh, who, who's saying that? On the way, Texas counties were was un nah. I think there should be no bail for people. Yeah, and wh why did you type in East uh, Two Hig? We need to leave right wing talking points out of true crime. Well, we need to le leave your talking points out of true crime too. Okay, um, so you you have talking points that don't make sense with true crime. Uh, true crime. I'm I'm for punishing criminals not nuancing and giving them breaks and coddling them along and giving them more seemingly rights uh, leading up to trial than family members and shit like that okay yeah what a what a dumb comment jesus you know? hey thanks linda howell as in 
Linda Molden Howe and the cattle mutilations in crop circles. <laughs> and it's not right wing talking points. This is somebody just having a brain that thinks. You know, it, it's weird. I don't have a talking point. I just look at something and go, oh, wow, that doesn't make sense to me. Uh, you probably have talking points. That's why you thought that mine was a talking point. Uh, thank you, RF. It's not right or left. It's Yeah, it, the thing is, aren't there some things that are just true? Yeah, I think there should be no bail for certain crimes. Not like, if it's anything... Um, like I would say if there's a murder involved then there's no bail uh, well I mean I don't know you know it's it's case by case right I mean if it looks like maybe it's self-defense and I don't know why people say um, I would say no bail for a case like this this is one where yeah there's no bail because he can just take off and leave and go somewhere right this isn't a case where you want to give bail to somebody and you wouldn't want to give bail to, uh, in a case like this, if it was, um, t you know, like an actor <laughs> that was in Hollywood. It's what the crime is. Right. Well, he wouldn't be able to uh, afford bail, obviously, right? I mean, he's Guatemalan immigrant. How do you know, Gray? That's very bias of you. Well, I just feel like he since he's living in a, in a really kind of crappy apartment as a roommate of two other people that he isn't a millionaire okay and that's what is bail. if there is a bail it'll be like five million dollars okay <laughs> i mean it's not going to be some sort of tiny thank you deborah blum rogers mm -hmm. it, it's yeah it's horrible david you know when you go like go to um, Home Depot now, they don't even have the items where you walk up and buy a drill. You have to uh, get it like a take a picture of this you know this QR code, then you bring it over when you're paying, and then they unlock it and pull it out because all these people are stealing everything, and it has nothing to do with the economy. Everybody, it has to do with it was made okay. Uh, by certain cities and so forth out there, okay? Great, that's just a talking point. Well, maybe it's true, though. Have you ever looked at it? I mean, in Oregon here, all of the targets have got the hell out of Dodge. You know, they're gone. Or, no, Walmarts, I mean. They're just gone because people were just running in, stealing all kinds of shit and taking off with it. <sighs> Guess what, everybody? Law and order makes a difference. Hey, Gen H, I'm glad I was able to make you laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah Walgreens. We, we still have some Walgreens and whatnot, but... No bail, ocean wave. It's just ocean sick, wave. man. Ocean wave. And you, oh, an entire police department just walked off the job. Um, I can't remember if it was in Michigan or where the hell that was. Man... We're law, listen, guess what, everybody? This is a true statement I'm about to make here. Law and order is what creates a civil society. And that's why we need police. Yeah, Minnesota. There. That's why we need police. <laughs> I mean, it's weird. It's not true, Gray. It's how you're raised. If you sing Kumbaya, everybody gets along. Gosh, Gray. Oh, yeah, that's right. Just listen to that and we all get along. Nope. It's just like, you know, you know those apocalyptic movies and shit that you watch? That's how it kind of it would be. Like if you didn't have law and order, people would just go, oh, I want to take that. And they would go take it from you and nobody's going. And it's going to be who's ever the strongest and meanest and biggest with the best guns and everything are going to take over. And that's sort of how it is in the third world countries out there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's crazy. Hey, thank you, Jason Freer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. True crime. Yeah. With Eve. I think it's going to get a lot worse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Does anyone buy Brian Koberger's defense? No. Well, what is the defense that he was driving around? Yeah, we've already gone over all that. Brian Koberger's defense is, I drive around, and guess what? There's other Elantras driving around at four in the morning, too. Not just mine. In fact, I have a bunch of friends I won't name. It was an anonymous um, Dropbox account where we would we were all people that had white Elantras, and we thought it was really fun to sort of caravan around and drive around late at night and shit like that. But I don't have their names, and I can't tell you who they are, but it's just so weird. And on that night, there was four or five of us. It was crazy. We started driving around from 2.30 to 4.30 in the morning. It was absolutely unbelievable. So how can you dare say it was me? Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't really have one, but he said, yeah, we're driving around. He loves to drive around and get... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, by the way, yeah, you like what Eugenie just said. How many times can one individual get pulled over? <laughs> I mean, he got he got pulled over. Let's see, one, two, uh, three, four times in like a three month period. I wonder if they were all looking at him like, what, what's he doing over there? Hey, blue, blue, blue. <laughs> All right, see you later. Being pulled over is very Ted Bundy. Yeah, I, think, I wonder if it's just sort of his look, you know. I haven't been pulled over in 15 years. I think I have four or five speeding tickets in my life. Maybe maybe six, I don't know. But, but you know, that's 40, you know, I mean, 40-something years of driving. I don't think that's terrible. I mean... One speeding ticket every eight years or, or six years or something. I mean, yes, driving while creepy. That makes sense. Oh, and by the way, thanks again, everybody, for supporting the channel here. Uh, we've got a, let's see. Yeah, we've got a, a new DNA case that we just picked up yesterday for those of you who missed the show last night um it's uh three thousand dollars so i'm going to do the whole thing at the end of this month and it's to identify a baby who was born and then just thrown out a window of a vehicle and the baby just died it's a homicide this is like 20 years ago and uh the baby never even had a name or anything I mean, how disgusting is that? So, uh, this is this will be a, a really kind of a a great case for us because it's a true crime case as well. It doesn't give the name back to the child because there wasn't one. However, it will punish, hopefully, the person who just chucked her out the window because that's murder. You know, it's horrible. Although there are people out there that think you should be able to abort a child, even after birth. Isn't that the weirdest thing you've ever heard in your life? Thanks, k -me. So anyways, that's coming up here. Might be, uh, I don't know, next in a month or so. I mean, every, these things all take a long time. But I'm really more pumped about the one that we're doing out of um, Addison County, Vermont, where we've been on this one for two years at least. I mean, how long do you think, I don't know if Plato's out there, but how long do you think we've been, you know, this is one of those ones where we got the DNA and then then they were going to give up and maybe uh, something, and then we tried another technique, and, and then we're about to give up, and, but it's like, well, we they don't want to exhume the body ever uh, another time. So then the next one, somebody just said, hey, we got this new technique, and boom, we'll test it out for free on that case <laughs> oh yes yeah the Vermont uh, case is a lady 
And, and guess when this was? 1935, I believe. And they were there for two, two years. So it was 1933. It's a mother and two children. Apparently, one of them is the child. They did the D, uh, They were able to get that at, uh, much out of the DNA, I guess. And uh, they were like wrapped up in awnings and just sort of thrown on the side of the road somewhere on a really remote place. And so that would lead to likely the suspect because, I mean, obviously they wouldn't be alive anymore, but there was no reporting of people being missing or a mother and two children. So then you would think, well, who would not report that? Well, likely the husband. So I guess we'll, we'll get to find out an answer on that one of these days. Yeah. <clears throat> right. How do you... Well, some of them are just ones that they say. Like Misty sent me a text message the other day and said, Hey, great. What do you think about doing uh, an infant case? And I go, yeah. Well, tell me about it. So we talked on the phone for a few minutes. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. That's that's how easy, That's how simple it went. Now I'm saying, let's do it. <laughs> but I'm... You know, that's me sort of relying on the channel, you know, keep doing what we're doing. Like every single night, the freaks take care of the cha the channel, allows me to make an income too. And then I donate over 50% of the net revenue to various true crime related charities, including the, the DNA fund that we've put over $60,000 into it. So there you go. My uncle is a cop and met my aunt. I don't know what that means. When he pulled her over? Or oh, hey, look at that. I guessed it. <laughs> I guessed it. That's funny. Yeah. I got the I got the right. See that? Look at the deduction skills there. Hello, gray mods and freaks. Um, yeah. All right. Anyways. Let's get to... I wanted to discuss the uh, some interesting thoughts on the Richard Allen now this is what with the part two we did part one the other day and then we got sidetracked with a bunch of new um, you know, different cases out there especially the uh, which one was it yeah Rachel Morin and Maria Gonzalez Welcome, Sean Pellegrino. Oh, wait, I got rid of the... It's right there. Thank you, Ali79. Greg, can you explain how the channel helps solve some cases? The DNA part. You have a, con you have a contact and then the channel... Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you in a second. Yeah, so Identifinders International... Yeah. The DNA part, you have a contact and then the channel supports their work. Right. So me and I, I, I was became friends with Colleen, Dr. Colleen Fitzpatrick. You know, I think I just wanted to know more about DNA and stuff one time, like four or five years ago or something. And then we were talking and I was realizing, you know, we're, we're donating money to charities. So maybe we could build up a fund for her, we, I actually talked about doing something like a, building a 501c myself, and but just, you know, that starts getting hassle. You have to have a board and all these people on it and shit. So, uh, so they're Identifinders Inter International, and they do forensic genetic genealogy. But there's a whole, there's a ton of cases out there, Jane and John Doe's, and... Um, yeah, mainly that's kind of the main thing, like Jane and John Doe's, and then there's crimes out there, but they're in communities where they don't have the funds to pay for forensic genetic genealogy. So I said, well, why don't we fund it? Because there was other people doing some similar things, like the Porchlight Project, and, and uh, so we started, you know, sending it in, and, you know, we solved, I think, five or so. You know, when I say we solved, I mean... We pay for it. I mean, we're not the scientists who are doing it. Uh, but it's sort of like you could sort of look at it like Identifinders uh, were a team with them, and they're sort of the tool that actually 
achieves it. Like, you know, for example, like DNA, you put it into a machine and it spins around and then it spits out a sequence, you know, in the labs. It wasn't the actual, you know, technician. So they're, they're, they're the machine identifiers. They actually do uh, all the crazy work on the side. So hopefully that made sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got to get Misty on a little earlier. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, so we've got, uh, you know, we also did a serial killer victim. Uh, I mean, we literally, I think we've got four or, you know, five cases that are, uh, there's even more that have been solved, but we don't get to know the names. They're, and one of them I don't really want to know the name, to be honest with you. It's kind of, uh, you know, the underworld shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then there, you know, I cover some of these cases out there that there's DNA, and sometimes I bring that up and say, hey, have you guys called them? Why don't you call them about this one? You know, we've made it pretty far in some conversations with people, but then it sort of goes somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. You know what I noticed, though? When I was talking of doing, um, telling you guys how I was feeling about, um, you know, certain elements of society, the super chats were just. <laughs> And now, now I'm realizing why there's these shows out there that they do politics because it seems like everybody gets more interested for some reason. <laughs> but I don't really want to do that because it just gets to the point where everybody gets starts getting angry. Now oh, there's so many. Like, go to NamUs. There's so many Jane and John Doe's on there. Mm-hmm. You know, it's weird about does. It's spelled just like does, but you you just have to, in context, know it's does. Oh yeah, why not, Tammy? <laughs> and if you know if the super chats aren't working for you, you could always use PayPal. You know. Hey, thank you, East to Hig. East to Hig. Does that mean something? East to Hig. East to Hig. East to. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if it's one of those things where if you say it fast, it sounds like something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's right, Mike. Like, for example, there's people out there that think it's a great idea during an election year to charge a person running for office um, with all these crimes because they don't like him. Uh, I guarantee you this, this looks so bad to the rest of the country. I mean the world, not the country, because a lot of people think, oh, it's great, it's a great idea. Hey, thanks, Elaine. Oh, God, hyoid boin. Oin, 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 left it. No, it doesn't work. Hyoid boin. That's usually the first thing that I that, that I come up with is boin. It never I can almost not say it once. It's strange. You have to stop and go, hyoid. Yeah, Jesus. Hyoid boom. Oh yeah, there it is. I, it, the problem with um, true uh, politics is I end up getting really frustrated, you know, when it's all said and done. I, I don't really feel like that way with true crime. I mean, don't you guys feel like that? Like, you're in a conversation, 
and you're just saying something that just makes so much sense but somebody doesn't want to agree with you because of a, like sort of emotional just sort of beliefs not facts you know strange so then i just go forget it yeah. mm -hmm. that's what i mean the third world countries do that stuff that's what i'm saying so it make it just looks terrible especially when you have a guy on the other side who uh, absolutely is <laughs> become wealthy uh, by selling his influence but they, people won't admit it you know it's just the way it is so. yeah it sucks this this whole uh, I wish we could just blink our eyes and place other people I'm telling you man get Mike Rowe in there and our our uh, society is back to normal again and I, I, I and, and I tell you what I put him in there for 16 years <laughs> just to have some normal type person. Oh, Mike Rowe, he's the guy that does Dirtiest Jobs. He's the narration. He does that. He's the narrator for Deadliest Catch. He had the dirty, uh, Dirtiest Jobs show. But if you listen to him on Facebook and you just sit there and you listen. I've said, my, I brought this up 50,000 times on here. But if you just go to his Facebook page and listen to videos that he, when he has his mom on and just the way he th thinks about things like job, he's just the most pragmatic person you'd ever want to listen to. And you just go, God, isn't this the way it should be right here? It's amazing. And he can speak phenomenally well. His mom is freaking amazing. H uh, hilarious. <laughs> I mean, and she's like, 80 probably I mean it just I wish I could just blink my eyes and he's president without having anything in between because that is exactly the he's absolutely likable by everybody uh, but he's just pragmatic right down what what makes sense and hey, listen to how he talks about he says that um, kids have been sold a bill of goods telling every child they need to go to college when there's absolutely, there's these trades out there that they can write their own ticket. They could be welders, plumbers, electricians, and they'll make six figures, and they'll do really well in life. Some people aren't cut out to do college, right? Especially some of the shit that you learn in college. It doesn't get you anywhere when you're done. This guy, he knows exactly what, what he's saying is absolutely true. There isn't a second... Well, I don't know, Gray. I think it's really important. Now, forget it, okay? Sometimes there's just things that are right, and there's things that aren't. There isn't a nuance in the middle there. So anyways, if you guys are ever bored sometime, go check out Mike Rowe on Facebook and just listen to him. And go onto YouTube and listen to some of his interviews that he's done. He's not joking around the whole time. He is absolutely amazing. So uh, you're just bored, and he's he's interesting to listen to too. He's not, uh, and he's not running for anything. So I'm not trying to push something, but I wish somebody had asked him to run one time after I had already thought he'd be great. <laughs> and I'm not sure what happened on that one, but man, yeah, he's a great singer too. Yeah, that's right, that's right. He did opera. <laughs> yeah, he's got well, he's got literally right now. You know, I I put him right up there with one of the best narration voices that there is. I mean, he's, he's freaking amazing. Yeah, the monkey one? Yeah, I'm sure he could, but you didn't even type it in right there, this account. <laughs> you didn't even type it in correct. You thought, Hayada bone. Hayada bone. Yeah, I said that, Christy. Yeah. Mm hmm <laughs> yeah, this is our this is like the new Saturday night, man. We just come in here and And thanks for like I mean a lot of the freaks are you know, Democrats probably voted for Biden and shit like that. Unfortunately. Uh, I wish there was somebody else they could have voted for, but uh you know, we just you no, know, nobody hates anybody. 
But then you, every once in a while you get the ones that if you say something that doesn't fit what they believe, they freak out. Right. Would you consider a call-in contest as who can say hi yo bone? <laughs> Maybe, no, there's no, there isn't a soul on the planet that can do that. Not even Micro can say hyoid bone three times fast. Yeah, one of these nights we'll do it. Okay, we'll, we'll pick like a, a 45 minute time frame and then you guys call in. Maybe at the end of tonight. Well, maybe. Well, it's, we've been on an hour. So. Yeah, I got. I get unfriended if I say anything. Like it doesn't fit the mantra. I just uh, want someone to run this joint who can stay on a bike <laughs> or in their shoes. Or how about shaking hand to air? Do you like that one? Just turning and shaking uh, your hand to the air and there's nothing there? Uh... If I was American, I would vote Trump in less than something better. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. That's why I'm saying. Like, I, I actually, you know. I mean, uh, that's why I'm saying. If Mike Rowe ran, <laughs> I would just be totally into it. Because I know that he isn't unlikable by everybody. You know, every time we seem to run, there's everybody hates one person and everybody hates the other side. Yeah. You know? And they love the other side. So you hate and love and hate and love. But what about like, oh, I like him, but I don't agree with him. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I absolutely dislike Joe Biden. I think he's one of the worst lying sacks of shit presidents that there ever was. He actually stole scripts when he ran for president decades ago. And the media trashed him. They go, Look at that. He took exact lines from this other person. And then for some reason... They just forgave him over the years, okay? So there you go, right? That, that's my opinion on him. Now, a lot of you hate Trump for a lot of the same sh weird shit that he's do doing, right? It's not the same shit, but it, it's other stuff that you don't like. So the thing is, is, why can't we find somebody that I don't even feel like I just said to you, right? I think Joe Biden is horrible, okay? And a lot of you think Trump is absolutely horrible. So why can't we find somebody that I might say this to? You know what? I really, I, I actually absolutely like this person, but I don't agree with them. And if they won, you know, I would be okay with it because I, I, I think that they're a good person. Wouldn't that be amazing, you guys? Wouldn't that just be incredible to do that at one point? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Wouldn't that be absolutely amazing at some point if somebody would run that you could literally say, you know, I, I really like them. I, I just don't agree with their politics. And then I think people would be okay if the other side won. But we don't have that anymore. And I think one of the reasons is, you know, both sides uh, demonize the other side to try to get the election. Um... One side more it will go to greater lengths than the others to do it, but now he wasn't like that at all, Daniel. He was absolutely not like that well at all. That wasn't Obama at all. Who the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Man, are you kidding me? Uh, I would, I would, I would vote for a homeless person over by Yeah. Well, there you go. See. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never. Uh, I, I couldn't stand uh, Obama either. I th he was just really doing some shady shit. Now people liked him because he was oh he was so you know kind of cool and funny and stuff. But I didn't like him myself. I just want somebody out there that's likable. Somebody kind of in the middle. That's uh, yeah exactly. He he flamed the fuels of racism uh, the flames of he fueled the flames of racism his entire time in there you know, remember that one police officer situation the cambridge police department 
all kinds of different things. The Trayvon Martin. If I had a son, he'd be Trayvon. You know, it just goes on and on and on. It was, it was, it was hideous. Okay, you just need somebody that's just a normal, middle of the road person who um, everybody likes. You just might not agree with them. Right, that's probably it, CJ. Something like that. <laughs> no thanks. I, there's no way I could run. Yeah, you, you, you'd get these stalkers on social media who would post, look what Gray said, take it all out of context, cut out the last part, and they'd say, look what Gray said, you know, so it just, it wouldn't work for me, but. All right, so do you guys mind if we get over, I wanted to do the Richard Allen questions here. Gray, I wanted to see those a while ago. I didn't come here to listen. Yeah, that's okay. Hey, look, at, I, I fully, I'm fully aware that every time I have a show like this, where for a few minutes or whatever, tonight's been a little longer, we talk about something in the pol political realm that my uh, people unsubscribe from my channel. And that's what, those are exactly the people that I'm talking about. Okay? Yeah, so I don't care when somebody unsubscribes when I'm talking about this and it was too much for them and they cried and walked away and they're not going to be here. It doesn't bother me one bit. It's the people that stay that are like, you know, I Gray, you know, like you might not agree with anything that I'm saying tonight, yet at the same time, you like me or respect what I do here in general 99% of the time and you know, all the great things that we do on this channel. Okay? So, um, but I feel like I should be able to talk about something every once in a while when I want to, because it pops into my head. Why should I be nervous to bring it up? Um, so, there you go. <laughs> yeah. I tried, I can rap too. Right, and so sometimes I'm just talking about something, and I think most people agree to uh, some of the stuff I'm saying, but when I, you know, maybe if I say, bad, I can't stand so-and-so, you're like, man, I think he's great, you know, and so that causes a problem, but that's it. Yeah, Cindy, go, go, <laughs> every time Cindy comments, it's never, I, it's always some, the way she does it, man, it just doesn't work for me. Uh, I don't agree what, what, what? I don't get it. I don't agree what you said, but feel no aggression. Yeah, no need to. Uh... Are you Daphne? There's another Daf M. Or mine. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you wouldn't be able to change my mind either, because uh, usually the counter is just some feelings type thing, not a not a rational. Uh huh. I stay for your common sense approach and also your sense of humor. Well, there you go. See, there you go. I made I was making people laugh earlier, and then I was making people pound on a table later, and then I had people. Yeah, that was great. You get all the emotions on one show here. And look, we're only an hour and nine minutes into this sucker. We got a ways to go, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. There's my... Uh, how you doing, by the way, David? Your family doing okay after your loss there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, so if you don't mind every once in a while that I go on to some other thing, you don't have to agree. The, what I don't want, though, is when somebody disagrees, at, like we had earlier, where somebody was like, Oh, come on! Are you kidding me? You know, about the whole, you know, I, I, don't, I think my comments about climate change were rational. It wasn't like I said it doesn't exist, but it's definitely oversold on the other side. You got to admit, like, it's just literally, oh, my God, in two years, we're going to be nine feet underwater. I mean, how many times has Al Gore said something like that, right? A thousand. So come up with something that's accurate that we can all see and measure, and then I think you might get somewhere... But at this point, it's just, you know, smoke and mirror shit. <laughs> I 
Well, good, Jared. Yeah. I don't know. It's really up and down. Maybe. Oh, yeah? One of those things you kind of don't know. How to... Yeah. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. It's sort of weird. You have, like, these moments where... It's always in the, in, um, like in the back of your mind when a family member passes away. It's like always there. You get these weird, like I'm, you know, like you feel like I remember always thinking, I'm never gonna see him again. You know. But then, I, then I, what comforts me, comforts me sometimes is to think something like, you know, like every single person that's ever lived has passed away at some point. And that was just their time. And someday you'll pass away. And, you know, we're all going to. <laughs> and uh, we'll, you know, hopefully we get to see them again or something. If not, you know, we all got to enjoy uh, part of somebody's life. And that's kind of where it is, you know, it's just. Uh huh. Yeah, I had this. Uh, we had this social worker for our family because we we merged two families together. So we had you know we had to go see a counselor to because you know, things were weird. You know, uh, this was back when I was a kid. So he was. Um, he said something like every single person that lives, like he thinks God is sort of this experience of mankind, like. All people experience, um, you know, for the, you know, all the experiences are, I don't know, I can't remember exactly how he worded it now. It was pretty interesting, though. We're all just experiencing things for, you know, the soul or God or something like that. And, you know, so I guess it's like even bad people are part of the experience out there he, he didn't bring up like heaven and hell and stuff like that you know one, one thing I, I won't be able to uh, so now I'm delving into religious stuff is I don't believe that see this is something I don't believe and I think if there was a God like this I wouldn't want to um, worship that God a God that says for example, the whole notion that if you don't believe in Jesus, you go to hell, right? So you could have this person on the planet that was absolutely amazing, treated people phenomenally well, but you just didn't believe in that stuff, and then you go to hell, right? <laughs> but then you could have somebody like uh, Ted Bundy, who right at the end said, you know what, I, and he really truly believed, oh my God, he's okay. I mean, I think that's sick. So. I wouldn't want a God that actually judged like that. I, I think they should be able to judge you on how you were um, on the planet and uh, how you treated, you know, treated other people and how you were with other people and things like, like that. All right, so maybe I have some work to do on some of that <laughs> shit there, but, you know. Well, you, there are people that believe what I just told you, Brittany. Yeah, and I, I don't. I'm not one of those people. I, I I think it would be so egotistical for um, a god to treat somebody like that. Oh, you don't believe in my my son? Well, hey, you're going to hell, you bastard! I mean, what a joke! Yeah. So, well, how do you know, Lisa? Maybe he really did believe right at the end, and now he's giving out chocolate milk and cookies. <laughs> it's just, that made me laugh myself right there <laughs> think about that you go you finally heaven exists everybody it exists yay and then you you're sitting there and Ted Bundy walks up and hands you some milk and cookies and he goes it's the damnedest thing <laughs> oh man hey thanks just Junie I'm technically Buddhist karma makes 
Hey, there we go. Look at here we go. <laughs> well, hey, it's possible, right? <laughs> right, Bridget? I mean, if, if that's what the rules are, as long as you believe. Uh, that last interview, they used him to say how bad the porn industry is and use it as an excuse for the crime. Yeah, I probably wanted to say, wow, so don't let your kids look at porn because they might turn into another Ted Bundy. I don't believe whatsoever that pornography turns somebody into a serial killer. They may have looked at pornography with the deviant mind that they already had, but it doesn't turn people into a, a serial killer. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know somebody doesn't agree with that either, and now we're going to get this big fight again. No, I don't have time to bleed. That's from Predator. I think that was um, Dutch Savage. I don't have time to bleed. This has been very therapeutic. Well, cool. All right. Point doesn't turn around into a serial killer. Yeah. We have covered it all, but gambling. <laughs> no, I'm, I, the only one I'm missing now is the abortion topic. We've done religion, politics, and abortion, but I won't do abortion. I won't do the conversation, okay? I promise. Well, uh, except for the part where, oh, here we go. No, I'm sure. Uh, I'm, let's see. I'll tell you. I'll tell you how many subs I've lost. Hold on. A second. Definitely haven't heard any come in. Let's see. Where are we at? I usually is like 15 or 20 whenever I talk about something that doesn't fit the. I wanted to talk about this. Uh, we are down about now, nah, like three probably. That's not terrible. Now watch on the replay, though. Oh, that bastard. How dare you? Uh, no, thank you. I don't really have a... a but by the way, the... Um, like, I don't have... I think people should can be whatever the hell they want to be. Uh, I'm just more about the sports angle there. We've talked about that a million times, Bally. That... Um, uh, w women around the country should fight as hard as they can to not allow um, sports to be, you know, taken over by biological males, and uh, that's a big problem. Okay, and I think more women should care because you guys work way too hard to get uh, become e equal, only to have it <laughs> screwed up again by males again. Right? Okay. So, uh, there you go. Uh, yeah, so that's the only thing. I brought that up uh, I brought that up on the show multiple times, and I think uh, it just makes sense. You know, it's... And I think men should also be fighting for the women in this case, too. Like, say, talk about it more. You see these fathers saying, Oh, I don't, it doesn't bother me. What the hell are you talking about? Mm -hmm. But other than that, I don't really care what somebody chooses to be or who they're attracted to or any of that stuff at all. Um, just is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that's a question that's been people have asked, and they, there's no answer for it. Do you, do you know that uh, I think it was a Supreme Court nominee when asked that exact question, Pamela? Couldn't answer the question. Yeah. Kind of sad, isn't it? I, I think Jen's a little bit on uh, rewind a little bit, but yes. Chocolate, milk, and cookies up there in heaven handed out by Ted Bundy. And look at that. Standing behind Ted Bundy carrying the tray of cookies is Ed Kemper. <laughs> Because he said, too, that he believed in God and everything. 
So we've got Ed Kemper carrying this large tray of cookies. And Ted Bundy is grabbing each cookie and handing a person a glass of milk and the cookie. Oh, it's going to be great. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then Dahmer is opening a door for somebody, the, ki the people to leave after getting that. And now we don't really know where they're going. but Or maybe he's the usher when they get there. Yeah, no, it's weird, isn't it, Valley? It's weird that you can't answer that question. Michael Cadell. How can I know that name? I now live in a country I no longer <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Uh, I wouldn't accept the cookies. They'd be poisoned by sicko Ted Bundy. Yep. They here become religious in prison, supposedly. Yeah, that's what they say. I guess there's more there. Here, here's what I, I, I think about sports. One more time. I think women should be able to compete at any level that they can. They should be able to aspire to compete with men in basketball if they're good enough. See, here's the thing is they'll make the team if they're good enough. Right? And let's say, and also in the Olympics for track and field, I think it, maybe they should turn it into where it's an open event where... There's categories for gold medals, though. So you have an open event, and everybody just competes. Like the 100-meter dash, why does it have to be where it's just guys running against each other, right? Couldn't it be where you have um, everybody's running the 100-meter dash, and let's say there's a woman who can run the 100-meter dash in 9-8. Well, shit, man. She should be able to run against the men. And then at the very end, you say... The gold, silver, um, like the gold medal for the open, which is the highest level, it might be, uh, you know, this guy and another guy gets the silver, and then a woman won the bronze medal, for God's sake. And that'd be crazy. Then it would be like the highest transgender uh, medal is this person and so forth. And then you don't have to worry about it at all. It's just people competing, especially in those events. Now, in other teamed events, you can't really do it that way. So it's more like just for swimming, track and field, things that are measurable with times. And you can't really do, you wouldn't be able to do like figure skating or anything like that. That doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, that's one of, that's a crazy thing about, like the women's professional soccer is saying, we should be paid the same. Uh, well, no, because that's not really how it works. I, I get it. I get what you're saying. But the way it works is advertising uh, advertising dollars. Now, the women's soccer team does get a good draw, but the league soccer, hardly anybody watches that. So how, uh, how could you get pay somebody? Like, for example, the WNBA basketball, most people don't even watch that. It has, you know, decent crowds at some of their games and everything. But, uh, you know... National TV, nobody, they're not going to pay millions and millions of dollars to, uh, so they, you know, to want the same type of pay, it just isn't going to happen until it becomes really, really popular. And so how does that become really popular? You know, I mean, uh, sometimes I like watching women's basketball because it's so fundamentally sound. There's a lot more, like, that's kind of how people should play basketball, sort of a passing team thing it's just like women's golf uh they play exactly the way most people should go try to go play like they're 225 yards out they don't smash a three wood and try to get on the green because they they are better at laying the ball up to the exact 100 yard mark then hitting a wedge in right on the flag and then make the putt for the birdie okay the uh, guys just go oh yeah and they take a three wood out and smash it and it goes in the lake <laughs> you know it's like 
it's better to play like I, I actually try to emulate the way women's golf is because it's more strategic and if you don't I'm not a bomber of the ball or anything like that mm -hmm. yeah like Danica Patrick she did do pretty good in NASCAR mm-hmm but imagine like having uh, a woman basketball player that was just a really good point guard, just phenomenal passer, really quick, could shoot three pointers, dribbling around, you know, and just like, hey, you know, tries out and maybe they make the team. I think that's great. But you should never have it where a man can compete backwards with women. That just doesn't make any sense. So, anyways, those are my thoughts. Hope it didn't offend somebody yet again. It always seems to, somebody always gets bothered by something. I doubt it, Cindy. Let's see. All right, anyways, let's get going on the... <laughs> I do want to get to this Richard Allen thing. I don't know, squat about golf. Yeah, well, golf's pretty easy to... I'm not a social activist, R&B. Yeah. I just think I want people to think about things every once in a while because these are things that are really going to affect women. And I mean like biological women, right? How on earth can you include every single segment of... I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even really sure how to do it. I, I it just. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about, CJ? Jesus. Good Lord. I was like when you got other people that come in and they try to like pluck people away or it's just well when you create a universe then you can make your rules huh well that sort of defends the other rule doesn't it my guy plays golf three times a week I don't even know who that is. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Daff M. All right. So I'm just going to do some questions on Richard Allen here now. In the Delphi case, kind of our part two of the Delphi questions that we did the other night. And here we go. Yeah, I'm not interested, Kat. I, as you can tell, we weren't even close to talking about that. Sounds like a psycho. Yeah, we weren't even talking about that at all. That's not the question. I gotta change it here though. Hold on. All right, here we go. Here we go, everybody. Is Richard Allen the person on the bridge? The bridge guy. That's what I meant to put. Here, let me do the pull. <laughs> okay. Man, you guys are just answering so fast. Here's the poll question. How about click on that one? All right. All right, here we go. So if you don't, if you don't re know, Richard Allen in the Delphi case is the individual who was arrested for their murders um, just a few weeks after law enforcement 
was communicating with Kagan Klein at an off-site prison somewhere about a the pedophile ring, likely. Just a few weeks later, they arrest Richard Allen at his residence, and apparently he had, or they did a search at his residence, and then two weeks after that, they arrested him. But uh, apparently, Richard Allen went up to a conservation officer uh, shortly after the murders and said, "Oh yeah, yeah, I was there that day." It never led to anything. All right. So, anyways, uh, so ninety-two percent. So, who are the eight percent of the weirdos out there that picked something else? Like, what, what, who else is it then? Type it in. If it's not Richard Allen, who don't do not say it's um, Ron Logan, please. Okay. But the eight percent up there, type in who it was if it wasn't Richard Allen. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah you know what's funny is they won't admit it the ones that said no they can't do it because they only do it that means there's seven percent of the people watching are trolls that's the truth of it gray how do you know they just don't think differently uh-huh yeah, wh why do you say that? Go ahead, type in who it is if it's not Richard Allen. Go ahead. They still don't know, Gray. <laughs> oh, God. <whistles> and by the way, would you guys hit that like button for me, please? We're at only at 318. With 650 people watching, I'm pretty sure it could be higher than that. All right, so hit the like button, hit the like button, 10, 20, 25, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 use your nose, 20, use your toes, use your tongue, do whatever it takes, hit that damn like button, it's the easiest damn thing in the world, just do it, just do it, just do it, 20, 25, 30, 25, 40, 25, 30, 25, 30, 30, 30, 30, but I don't like you, Gray, you are talking about politics, Okay, forget it then, don't hit it. Wow. All right, so we're at 93% up there. <laughs> Look at that, huh? We're going to end the poll. Only 161 votes. Uh, only about 12 or 13 morons. That's cool, though. I like that part. All right, so here we go. We're going to... And I'm not really saying that about you. I know some of you are just doing it in jest or or you're just crazy, but that's okay. It's all right. Don't worry about it. All right, here's a new one. So now that we say that he is the guy on the bridge, here's the next question. Is Richard Allen the person that killed Abby and Libby? There you go. All right. Right there. See, people think there's a difference there. So it's the same, it's the same number. Yes, yeah, so we're still getting 92, 93%. And I guess a, a follow-up question would be, All right, I'll do it in here. All right. So we got that same percentage. That's good. Good to see a consistency there. Almost the same number of people voted. All right. So that one's done. Then... Here's the next one. And there's the poll question. Is anyone else involved physically at the scene in the murders? I don't know if I uh, wrote that sentence well, but uh, you know what it means, right? So how can that not be the same? <laughs> so you guys, there, so there's a group of people out there that think there was more 
Um, is anyone else involved physically? It should, so it should be no at 93%. Because who else would be there? You think Kagan Klein or somebody sitting in the woods there with him? Oh boy, what's going on? Why is it, uh, maybe I worded it poorly. I think that's, I should have worded it more like how Danielle just said it. Here, let me let me end this one. I, I I think people get confused. Is Richard Allen a lone? Well, what I really want to say though is I don't want you to consider Kagan Klein, I or anybody else if you think he knows him or not. I want to know at the crime scene itself, is he the only killer? Okay, so is, I'll, I'll mean, word it like that. Is Richard Allen the only killer? All right, I think that's probably the better way to. Or would it, maybe it's better to say, was Richard Allen, nah. Because if you say he wasn't alone, you say, well, I don't know if he killed him. Uh, yeah, maybe that's a good way to say it. Sharp tack. He said, was was there an accomplice at the scene? Yeah, see, now we're at 93% again. So there you go. Yeah, 121 votes. That sounds about right. Now, now we're, oh yeah, now it's like, hey, hey, hey trolls, get over there really quick. Hurry up. Because like t 10, 15 people in a row voted um, no. <laughs> okay, so that was definitely a troll move there. There's no chance that just happened randomly. Well, no, I don't need an, I don't know. If you don't have a yes or no here, then there's something wrong with you, okay? And actually, as a matter of fact, um, if you don't say, I mean, I could see you saying no if you think there he had an accomplice that was at the scene. But to go, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. All right. I guess you, I mean, I don't know. Is Richard Allen the only killer? I think it's obvious that he's the only killer. He was the guy on the bridge. It's his voice. He had him go down the hill. He killed him on that side. And then um, Ron Logan's not part of anything. What do you mean not at the scene? I don't get it. Is Richard Allen the only killer? All right, there we go. And here's another one. Do you think Richard Allen has killed before? I, I I don't think he has. I think this was kind of like a fantasy situation that he's he's always had, or he wanted to you know he wanted to do it, or you know maybe something went wrong. We don't really know, but I think that he um, has never killed anybody before. He doesn't just doesn't strike me as being that like that. Although, you got to admit, like, if there are, um, what are those called again? Signatures. That's a little strange to do on your first one. So that might make you go, hmm, yeah, yeah, maybe there is something else out there, or out there, or maybe he just came up with some signatures right out the bat. I mean, if, if posing is a signature... You know, who knows why he posed. They're, they're, the things that have been referred to as signatures might not be necessarily. I mean, I like the way that I've described it in our interview where he said it was just really odd. You know, the crime scene was really odd. That's probably 
has a good chance of just sort of being the way it was and then later converted into signatures. Yeah, to me, he doesn't seem like the type that's killed before. He, he seems kind of weird, just sort of like, yeah, kind of, you know. I don't know. Just doesn't seem like it to me. I think uh, the Dropbox might have led to a fantasy. And don't forget, you guys, if you'd like to help support the channel, that would be awesome. Kick some ass. Got some shit to do at the end of the month here. Uh, crime of opportunity as well, perhaps. Eh, no, it wasn't. There's no chance that there was a crime of opportunity. Zero. Yeah, he went out there on a mission uh, to kill uh, Abby and Libby. Uh, and the I, I originally thought it was a guy out there hunting for a victim. But why did he have his head down and he was on a mission? Even the girls said that, the three. And he gets there literally... He walks by the parking area where, you know, near the Mears property. He walks by there probably seven or eight minutes before Libby and Abby get dropped off there. I mean, I guess if it was pure coincidence, that would be part of the coincidence. But is it really? He was in a hurry and he seemed like it seemed like he was aware of something that was told to Abby and Libby. And that's why. They were there. I mean, does, how many think it's significant that she didn't get a ride or ask Derek for a ride there, but just quickly jumped up later when Kelsey said she was going to be driving and wanted to get a ride with her? I think that that actually might be where a communication happened right in between that time. Possibly. Yeah, so most people say no on that. Up there for the pull question. Uh, well, I wasn't talking about hunting for animals, Pamela. I was talking about he was there hunting for a victim. No, of course not, Bill. Jesus. Good Lord. That's, that's, are you being like a troll, Bill? Was he muddy and bloody when he talked to a trooper? Or was that not the same day the girl... Are, are you joking? I mean... You don't think if he was bloody talking to the... <laughs> Forget it. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, check out the data on that creation of that account. No, it's not the same, Pamela. So. Uh, we have hunting here for a reason. People hunt, uh, a lot of people hunt for food for themselves. And uh, that's also, it's actually done for a reason because there's overpopulation as well with deer and so forth. At some points. <clears throat> yeah, I think a burner phone was used and it might have led to a river search. Yeah, well, I, I was thinking more it was the Samsung, the Samsung phone, but that was used. But yeah, what, what, uh, whatever he tossed in the river, I don't know. Could have been. Why would that be confusing, Bill? I mean, don't you think your question is just ridiculous? Like, you think he talked to the conservation officer, muddy and bloody, and said, "Oh, I was there," and then he just let him walk away? I mean, I think even that conservation officer would have recognized something there.
Yeah, I mean, it could be a burner, you know. I and mean, we've seen that. That's what uh, is going on in the Lisk case, right? People can go to the store and get meat. So what's confusing? Okay, Bill, Bill, I'll, I'm going to humor you. What, what is the, what's confusing you about the case right now? But gray. <laughs> Thanks, Cindy Lynn. I think he went home and showered first. No, no, he didn't, Diane. But gray. I guarantee it wasn't the same day. Here's when Richard Allen went and saw the conservation officer. When he saw his picture put up on the screen and a photograph. He knew it was himself. So he goes up to the conservation officer and said he was there, fully expecting him to say, Oh, that was you? Oh, yeah, we got a picture of you. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he didn't know where that picture had come from at the time. Richard Allen. So it was like one or two days after the homicides is when the image was put out there. So he was trying to get out in front of it. And uh, that's what's crazy is his defense is like, he came forward, he was trying to help. No, he's doing cl what criminals classically do all the time. They want to see what law enforcement has on them. Uh, that's just a troll there. I'm going to get rid of this person. I am sticking with the facts, Mark. See you later. Have a good time on another channel. But uh, those are the ones that you'll need to be on because they're the wackos who don't see the facts here. Now, is it possible that Richard Allen is a lone wolf person? Yeah, it's, it, it is possible. I just think it would be almost mind-boggling to think, again, for the 900th time, everybody, that if the, the only reason that the catfishing account of, you know, Ke Keegan Klein's catfishing account didn't get a meet up with Abby or Libby specifically was because some other random killer got there first. I mean, that's where that's where we're at here, right? Unless all the stuff that was in the interviews and different documents that we saw was all bullcrap. Okay. Uh, didn't Libby have a new phone or stick to the facts? <laughs> they didn't know each other. Stick to the facts. I, I think there's a hell of a lot more facts that say that they did know each other than circumstantially for sure than that they didn't, right? Well, I don't have to throw myself in prison here pretty soon, you guys. I'm sure I've been mean at some point. Super freak, yeah. Well, good, Brittany. I try to make people laugh. Well, it's not a comedy show, but I do try to make people laugh. All right, here's the next one. What do you believe is Richard Allen's motive? Anything? I think it was like a little bit of a couple things, like a sexual fantasy, and maybe there was money involved with something. Huh? 
what, what, what does that even mean, Mike? <laughs> Michael, what? to cut off any association with the phone pedo ring, huh? So he did this to cut off any association? I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, I've always thought he got paid to take the pictures. What do you mean you've always thought? Uh, I think he had those sadist fantasies. Well, what's, what, it, what's really interesting about Richard Allen is his, her, his daughter has a very similar sort of physical, you know, appearance as Libby. And that really eerie picture, I don't know who, you know, if he's involved with it or not, but of uh, the one with the actual tie-dye shirt that she's wearing on the bed. And then there's other pictures of her, like, at the Monon High Bridge, you know, sitting there. It's really kind of weird given, you know, after the fact. Now, people that live there go to those places all the time. I mean, you know, Richard Allen says he went to the park often. I don't, does anybody actually believe he would go to those trails often and, and walk around? I, I just, I don't see that at all. Richard Allen's about it. Uh huh. Let's see. I have the agree. Gray would have had it solved. <laughs> well, I mean, I tell you what. If I was a conservation officer, I would have. Get a fantasy and saw Libby as a surrogate for that. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. You think uh, instead of touching his daughter, he found another victim? Yeah, I mean, it could be something weird like that. You know, it's not un it's not an unknown thing. He wasn't walking around hunting and then. Right. I think he was there on a mission to meet Libby. And I think the way I picture it is I have that Dropbox account. And I think, um, you know, these people, these pedophiles, had access to communications. And it might have even been sort of like, hey, you guys, who, who's going to do this one? There's a girl that's going to be, uh, Libby's going to be there. Or, you know, I don't even know, man. It could even be where your specifics were wanted by somebody. And then there was a goal to procure sort of a, a meeting of some sort with somebody that matches a specific look for somebody. And then they go out there and, uh, you know, that's this is what happened. I mean, it, this all the stuff that I'm talking about right now, two years ago, for me, would sound, it would just sound ludicrous, to be honest with you. Like, if I, if I said any of the stuff, I'd go, oh, God. If I heard somebody else say it, I'd probably go, you, you sound like a lunatic. Okay? Um, but the last couple of years have opened my eyes dramatically to the world of, like, just the sheer numbers of people out there that are child predators and the great lengths they go through. You know? So. Well, you guys, you guys have done it, man. I'm going to have to throw myself in prison. We just went... <laughs> I mean, especially with another, we got another hour and 10 minutes or so. I have my three-year-old granddaughter, and she has had me busy. Uh. People are saying out there that Richard Allen's wife, Yep, well, I guess I can't, I'm in prison now. Some nights it's just, 
I was been so nice. I got to put myself in prison because I must have done something. And now we're going to have to get bailed out of here. Trying to make up for some of those slower nights earlier in the month. Sketches blended with Richard Allen. That's right, Baz B. I'm in there. I'm sure I'm in here for good measure. I, obviously, I've done something. Yeah, why are people saying that uh, Richard Allen's wife went to the funeral? Well, who's got information on that? And I don't know if that would matter that much, but doesn't that mean she would know somebody? Or yeah, that's not going to buy me anything nice. I'm going to, I should put the chat in there. How do I do that? <laughs> there you go. You guys are in the slammer, okay? They're right there. Keep going. There you go. Now you're behind bars there. So you guys are going to have to get yourself out of there. Thanks, Just Juni. Yeah. The chat it was really mean earlier. I don't look good in stripes. <laughs> yeah. It's all for a good cause, you guys. It helps support the channel. And then at the end of the month, uh, we have a $3,000 case to fund. And then also, uh, I'm going to give uh, money to charities because I donate over 50% of the net revenue to true crime related charities, including our DNA fund. So if you guys like to help support the channel, that'd be awesome. Uh, there we go with DAFM again. Thank you so much. Here's, here's for a bowl of Captain Crunch. Oh. Yeah. Captain Crunch when I was a kid was like you know, you'd almost <laughs> commit a homicide to get a box of that shit. You know, remember how you'd eat the little square yellow parts first, waiting for the last bull of the cherries floating around? Come on. You too, Fig Solves. You used to eat Captain Crunch just like that. You know it, right? Hey, thanks, Tammy Morell and Diane S. <laughs> you know, you ate the little ones and you kind of ate those a little bit. And at the end, you had the last bowl of the crunch berries or whatever the hell they were called. Thanks, Tammy Morell, Diane S., Kathy Chapin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Fig Solve, he, he couldn't answer the Captain Crunch question. Deal, even though modding while you talk politics is no fun. <laughs> yeah. But some, but I don't think I was really heavy politics stuff, though. It was just sort of like, these are my thoughts on various things. You know? I don't, you know, other than my comment about what I feel about Biden, because I just was giving you an example. I think it's everything's too divided at this point. All right. Anyways, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you guys for bailing me out of prison i think i got uh i gotta stay at a uh, motel six at the end with amber maiden i got a uh, uber with kathy chapin uh i got sardines uh from diane s tammy morell and then also daf m said here's a bowl of captain crunch right. well even though modding while you talk politics is no fun smiley face smiley face <laughs> Mm. All right. All right. So the next one is Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> Buy a drink. It's Saturday. The question is, did Richard Allen know a member of the Klein family? <coughs> Anybody? 
Because I, I thought in the past that the Emily Ann account by which could be Kagan Klein's father or somebody else um, seemed like that person might actually know Richard Allen. But it's a question, Patty. <laughs> we, we don't know. Jesus Christ. The question is, do you think did Richard Allen know a member of the Klein family? That's your opinion. I mean, it's obvious. I'm not asking you a, like, factual... Thank you, Sam Fadden. Or is it Fadden? always watch your channel and never comment. Thanks for... Right, but you answered in a weird way. We don't know. Of course we don't know. All right. I guess that makes. Uh, so I guess that made me. Uh, let me do a follow-up question then. So I guess that uh, sixty-eight percent. So then that should be the same as this one. Um, okay, so this one is, does Richard Allen have any connection to the Kleins? So I guess that would be anything, a Dropbox, the child pornography ring of some sort any connection whatsoever so I think it's amazing that, that there's so many people say no to that it doesn't really jive with some of the earlier questions there were once neighbors in Peru ah that's bullshit that's not a true story there was a different Richard Allen that lived in Peru. <laughs> okay, I looked it up. I found that Richard Allen. I was like, oh yeah, that's not him. Okay, so 18%. So how come the number is on the last one is not the same as this one? I guess it's different. The other one is, you know, one of the Kleins. The other one is just a looser connection with the child pornography ring, etc. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's rumors going around right now on social media that they're looking at a, that they looked at a place where Richard Allen, they are saying he worked at a Chrysler plant and maybe that's a place where he might have ran into um, uh, Tony Klein, you know, so nobody knows if that's even true whatsoever. It's just these really kind of vague screenshots from just really sketchy sources and, you know, like, why would that person have even had a sniff of uh, anything that looked like that? And all it is is an outline of subpoenas. So I don't know. I don't, I just feel like it's not something worthy of like giving any credit to or anything like that. But I, I would think though if there was any communications between the Kleins and uh, Richard Allen, it seems like more likely the person who was behind the Emily Ann account in trying to normalize. Some people are suggesting that it was K uh, Richard Allen was the one doing that over at Kagan Klein's residence. That he was the one using that phone. I just I don't I don't buy that. Because I think if that was the case, Kagan Klein would be serving five years in prison. Because he would have thrown Richard Allen under the bus for a huge deal. Uh huh. Yeah. Huh? 
No. Yeah, Emily Ann is Keegan Klein, another Keegan Klein's account. What, what do you mean? <laughs> yes, Richard uh, Keegan Klein, his ha a house or whatever, the IP address created Emily Ann and Keegan Klein account. However, the writing style and the words used, law enforcement believed, were, was totally different on the Emily Ann account when it was communicating to other girls and trying to normalize being with somebody 45 years and older. Now, tell me why Kagan Klein would ever do that. Why would Kagan Klein ever do something like that? What would, what would be his motive? So it's either somebody using the Emily Ann account or the, yeah, the Emily Ann account was trying to set up a situation where it was okay, the girl would be okay with somebody older. And that's a real thing, it sounds like. That, like, that really happened. Because you see the actual, you know, the wording is in some of these documents. And what, what does that even mean? I think it was two separate situations. What does that even mean? Good Lord. Multiple people have access to that account. Yeah, who? You mean Tony and... Well, well see, listen, uh, Christy. The account was only used at that residence. Okay? Those are the... The communications were done at the house. The IP address. Okay? So when you say multiple people, it wasn't like it was available on the Dropbox and other people used it over at their house. Right. Uh, so that's... You know, multiple usually means more than two. My internet is in fear. What is your thought on Richard Allen's decline? In well, I, that's one of my questions coming up. I think it's totally bogus. But it, that's one of my questions, so we'll get to that later. All right, you guys ready? Oh, there we go. Do you believe Richard Allen was involved with a child pornography ring? Okay. And then just sort of a side question. If you don't, then what was he doing? Why was he there that day? Why was he there that day? No, no, no chance. No chance. Oh my God. We're trying, what, we, what we got a lot of times on, on when I do my shows, you got these other true crime channels that try to come in and you know sort of blast out all their thoughts and hope to get, uh, hey, yeah, let me go check. You know, it just, it's just, it's crazy. All right. Um, it's not really, and I, you know, I don't mind having conversations, but always to be contradictory for every single freaking thing. It's just crazy. Really? I mean, so there was, so what you're saying then is that there's this, Somebody was catfishing Libby on their account, and then so was the Anthony Schatz profile. Just two, totally two different things. I mean, that is ludicrous. There has to be a connection. If, Kagan, if, if Richard Allen was communicating with Libby, then that, I think, even speaks more that there's a connection to the ring of some sort. Yeah, no chance. Uh, I would be more incredible if Richard Allen's mental... Dates stayed the same, then decline. Yeah, I, I just don't think that he is. Um, I, I, it's, it didn't decline. That, that's what I'm trying to tell you. His mental state didn't decline at all. Huh? No, there isn't, Daphne. It just goes up through. It's it's 
um, Ron Logan's property goes right up to a cemetery, and then it goes out to the road. It's it's irrelevant though to the case. So let's see. I think it's either Richard Allen is connected to Kagan Klein and the pedophile ring, or he's just a one random psycho that just showed up there randomly that day, and it's an absolute coincidence that the catfishing account didn't get to meet with Libby because he was there to kill them first. Yep. <laughs> Do you guys get a lot out there, get a lot done? Hey, say hello to the freaks. Hello, freaks. <laughs> That's Benjamin right there, you guys. Hello, freaks, he said. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things I was saying the other day about Keegan Klein is that... Um, if, if his information is what led to Richard Allen, then wouldn't he have got a good deal before already? Like, they searched the Wabash River, and then they arrested, they went and searched Richard Allen's home three two weeks later after that. Wouldn't it have been, like, if that is because of him, wouldn't that have been in the sort of negotiations, and he would have got a great deal just on that? So that's sort of the question that uh, makes me wonder there. I wonder if it was just despite him, not to spite him, but despite Keegan, through information they gleaned from him, they were able to find and re-look at some of the files and find Richard Allen. I mean, I just got it. After six years, doesn't it seem almost ridiculous that two weeks after searching the Wabash River, they're searching Richard Allen's home? How many coincidences in a row, in this case in a row, are we supposed to accept? And just, oh yeah, it's just a coincidence, right? Right, remember that? Yeah. And now ask yourself this. Can anybody explain why... Okay, so here it is. Kagan Klein doesn't have anything to do with anything. Why in the hell is Doug Carter and Jerry Holman, for God's sakes, at that hearing where he got sentenced? They're just mad at him for all the stringing along they've done? He did in the Delphi case? I mean, why was, why was, uh, Jerry Holman's the one that I just go, whoa, what is he doing there? Because he is pretty much the main Delphi guy, right? Like, uh, Jerry Holman was uh, pretty much the lead investigator at the beginning. He even went to the FBI for special training early on. And uh, Doug Carter is the superintendent, the head of the entire Indiana State Police. And he's there at a, you know, low-life scumbag, Kagan Klein sentencing. Anybody, can anybody explain that coincidence? Yeah. So I'm trying to, when you start putting, like, coincidence on coincidence on a coincidence on a coincidence on a coincidence, it's the same thing as... Uh, circumstantial evidence it builds up and you start saying man right but but uh, why would they go to that though I'm, of course they worked really hard to turn him but they're there because they think they think he's associated don't you hey thanks so much Kelly Snyder went to my local CVS Thursday the cashier was telling me uh, that she worked with Richard at the, the Delphi CVS. She said she is still shocked and died. Hey, why don't you have, can you maybe uh, have her call me up, <laughs> Kelly? Can you somehow get a hold of the person and say, hey, uh, just sort of uh, maybe an offline interview? That'd be kind of interesting, I think.
What do you think? Come on, Kelly. Hook me up. Um, I don't know. I, I, well, originally I thought he might have, but why didn't he go attack Sue anyways? And I think mainly if you were going to use the technique that maybe he was doing is once they were on the bridge, they're isolated and really can't get past you. Sue would have been on the trail and could have just ran the other direction. So, yeah. No, Sydney. She said she is still shocked and digested at him being Sue was old. It was a very interesting conversation. Er. Sue was an older person. Where are you, Kelly Snyder? Oh, cool. Yeah. See if, um, why don't you send me an email or something? Then I'll give you my number, and then you can give it to her. Is that cool? That'd be pretty sweet. And by the way, I wasn't talking about uh, earlier with about Fig Solves. He, he's, Fig Solves is, is, you know, he's pretty schooled up well on the Delphi case. Uh, we email uh, occasionally. Let's see. So the popular theory is Kagan Klein set it all up with Richard Allen actual crime let me ask you uh, let me do another poll here for a second let me end this one so this one was do you believe Richard Allen was involved in child pornography yes 83% let's see uh, now now I forgot the question <laughs> I knew I was gonna forget the question as soon as I read that one but that's all right Richard Allen, according to plotted the fateful day. Timing Richard Allen exhibited. Yeah. Um, I mean, if Richard Allen just happened to get there, then everything would have fallen into place the exact same way it fell into place because it's still incredibly fortunate for him that the girls got there at, uh, just after him and they go out onto the bridge and there's not a soul in front of him and there's nobody behind him at that point. It must have been kind of weird for Richard Allen because Sue was just there. So as he was walking across the bridge, I think he was kept looking and looking and looking and he was lucky because Sue didn't go back to the bridge. She turned and went out to the parking area, got into her car and drove away. Yeah, uh, Richard Allen... Well, here's the thing. If Richard Allen takes his life before trial, he, he he's admitting he did it. I've never seen anybody who's saying they're innocent look more guilty than Richard Allen. This, this guy is... <laughs> uh, it's almost unbelievable. All right, so here we go. Here's the this question right here. Oh, you can't really answer that question. I'm just putting it up there. There's no yes or no. Sorry. I'll just end that poll. There's no way to answer it. <laughs> so anyways, uh, why did Richard Allen contact the conservation officer? I think he did it to get ahead of it. He saw his face on the news it was him and he said yeah I was there that day and he was hoping you know maybe the guy was oh that was you okay that was you in the picture he was doing remember how um, you know what law enforcement said at the beginning they said they asked the person in the picture right there they asked the person 
in the picture to come forward and uh, let us know because we wanted to ask have some questions right so he did that he saw his face he came forward and the conservation officer just went yada 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 okay goodbye <laughs> isn't that incredible money now yeah, the, there's huge amounts of money in uh, film so you know I have a theory but it's you know it's not likely to be true but it's not outlandish okay uh, I've said it many many times uh, oh yeah so here's the thing do you guys believe that Kagan Klein really did do a marathon gas station search in Delphi on the day of the murders. Does that, do people believe that? Because I do. I think he did do that search. And it was too specific in the murder sheet thing about, you know, the FBI was like, oh man, they screwed up on the hard drives and all that shit. Okay, so if you believe, I think it's like, nine. let's just say it's 95% that he did that. So if you believe that Richard Allen, um, I mean, Kagan Klein looked for the Marathon gas station, and, and you believe that, then you look at this right here and look at where Richard Allen lives compared to the Marathon gas station. Uh, just as a crow flies, uh, a crow that flies really straight, uh, it's 0.67 miles. It's just right there. It's nowhere. So why is he doing that? I mean, what are the odds again? And so here's another thing that's weird. If, if Kagan Klein, the catfishing account, was going to go meet Abby and Libby, why did he search for this gas station? Or the, the gas station over here. Wouldn't he want to be over here somewhere where you run into him? But he does this search in a place that's really convenient for Richard Allen. And likely, and guess what, everybody? Here's another thing that it, you got to put into the mix of the coincidences. So Richard Allen likely took this route. He drove from right here down this road. And then right here goes north. Then on West 300, crosses the Wilson Bridge here. Then he drives over like this. Comes up, boom, 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 all around, passes the cemetery, and then he drives by here, and then he parks here at the abandoned CPS building right here, backed in. Okay? But guess what? He didn't drive back by. Uh, you notice in the probable cause, it didn't say the dark-looking um, sort of, you know, the vehicle that he drove. It didn't go this direction. It didn't, it didn't pass the camera here. So guess what it did after this? Watch this. So to get home, he likely drove like this, underneath here, and he went under West 300, the same place that Sue came in on. Then he would have driven down, uh, likely, yeah, uh, I don't know if there's a way off of here. No, see, that goes under the freeway, so no. So he would have came underneath here, got on the East Main Street, driven down right here, turned left on Southwest Washington Street, and oh my God, he drives right by the Marathon gas station. And then he lives right here. You don't think that that is another crazy kind of coincidental aspect there? That that is the exact way you would get home because he did not pass this camera right here. He goes this direction, goes underneath here, down underneath there, and then he would take a right here onto Main Street and then after driving down Main Street, he would take a left on Washington Street, and that drives right by the Marathon, Marathon gas station on the way back to his house. Of course, you'll see that exact same theory on another channel or something later, and they'll go, oh, look what I thought of! 3,000 people in town, right half, maybe then, six years. I think that's an interesting another piece that you go wow that's weird now the thing is if he's if i don't know what time of day he searched it wouldn't actually matter to be honest with you if, uh, if kagan searched at four o'clock in the afternoon it would still be interesting because is that like later on he met him there or what 
What do you think about that one? Are you still out there, fig solves? <laughs> I want to know what you think about that part right there. Because we know, again, on the probable cause document, look at all these times right here. At 1.30, Richard Allen's heading this direction in, a, in the vehicle. He even admits that he parked here, backed in, right? However, after the muddy and bloody, there isn't another sighting of the car going this way. Therefore, it had to go the other direction. Now, you could argue that it drove here and went all the way up in these crazy areas up in there and, and came around and so forth. But more likely is that he came like this. Now, it is pretty crowded in there. And, you know, a lot of like going into the town here might be weird to be driving around muddy and bloody. But that is the route that you would go. Now, in his car, he might have wiped himself off a little bit or something. Just so he didn't appear muddy and bloody while he was driving. Yeah, so why do you think Richard Allen contacted the conservation officer? I think we already went through that. Uh, Richard Allen met with... How do you know that, though, Sydney? Why are people talking about, like, they know exactly the date? That's the exact the date, though, that I would predict it. I said I was thinking two days later, and that's exactly when they put out the image of the bridge guy. Right then. It wouldn't shock me, but how do you know that's the answer, Sydney? Because somebody told you that on Facebook? Do you have a document that tells you the answer to that question? What are you talking about, Zozo? There's all kinds of... For, be, you got to be specific when you say something like that. Has Richard Allen's wife divorced him yet? Uh, I think she's sort of standing by him. or Not standing by him, but communicating with him. What do you mean, where did the phone ping with the porn? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> yeah, when, when they were communicating with the girls, it was pinging at their home. And there was another ho house up the road from the grandparents' house. Yeah. Anyways, um, I'm intrigued. Jesus. Good Lord. Um, what would be a on tape? Hey, good night, Linda Howell, as in Linda Molden Howe of the Cattle Mutilations and Corrupt Circles. Oh, God. Let's see. Mark doesn't say a word. I always think Mark's a troll, you know? Because he never says a word. But the second Zozo shows up, he says, Hi, Zozo. And then he doesn't say a word again. Uh, listen, Mark. Um, you're not going to get a date. Okay? I'm just... I'll let you know that now. Let me decide, Gray. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess so. He doesn't say a word. Like, he hasn't spoken a word all night. He hasn't typed in a damn thing. Let's see. <laughs> no, I just happened to see that right there. I just happened to glance in here. I'm barely reading anything. And there it is again. What kind of freaks do you generate? Well, I, I guess all kinds. Is 
did say he would like a free membership earlier. Oh, he did say that? Uh, he made a comment? Yeah. Well, maybe I'll give away some later. I mean, there is a $1.99 option on there. I give free uh, free memberships away a lot. So do other people, like Eugenie. And notice, not another comment again. Never get it until themselves are affected by crime. Shot, salt, lemon, cigarette. <laughs> uh, a shot of tequila with salt and a lemon. Then smoke a cigarette and take some As uh, Advil before you go to sleep so you don't have a hangover. Hey, good one. All right. Yeah, the chat's all over the place. Yeah. It always gets thrown off the rails. Yeah, you're having a pretty good conversation and then a few different comments that are unrelated. Just go, Pow! you know. Okay. Uh, did Richard Allen... So the other one is, uh, did Richard Allen confess to his wife in jail to the crimes. I mean, do you think you really did? Because I do. I mean, I think uh, basically even the defense admits it, right? And why do you think he did that? Like when he was in jail, why do you think he told his wife and his mother-in-law, I guess, is it his mother-in-law or his mom? I can't remember, but why did he confess to them? I mean, I'd like to know what the wording was on that, wouldn't you guys? Yeah, I mean, it's been fun tonight. You know, I'm just saying, like, we were on a pretty good case roll a minute ago, and it just went pow. Yeah. Hey, Rosanna. Looks like the show's dying down. I can just feel it. For tonight, it's just <laughs> mm -hmm. because he knows the authorities have a ton of evidence against him. Now, well, I wonder what it, I would love. Wouldn't you love to hear what his incriminating comments were? Specifically, how he worded it. Hey, welcome, little darling, A.K.A. Mrs. L. <laughs> Mrs. L. Uh, good night, Linda. Yep, yes. Da, da. Yeah, I mean, he would have said something like, well, I just went there to meet him and things got out of hand. Something like that. Yeah. But... Once it got out that he confessed, he then had to say, oh my god, you're toast. You have to say that you were crazy. Here, sit here and dribble all, you know, dribble some gravy all over your shirt and let's take a picture. You know, he's, come on. It's a total garbage, that whole scene there. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with them at all. And that was the next question. Was Richard Allen really sick when he asked to be transferred? I'll, I'll do that one as a poll so that you can put it on there. Now the um, Richard Allen is innocent crew are all going to say yes. Okay. Because he definitely wasn't sick. Uh, people don't magically get sick when they... Uh, put out some damning information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe, Carla. Maybe brought up aliens, too. We're just not sure at this point.
the guilt didn't bother him for five years. I know. You know what I think? I do think it. I think he for five or six years he was shocked that they hadn't arrested him. And the whole time he was walking around, he just thought he was walking on borrowed time. I bet he. That's why he just sort of started off sort of normal looking, and then he just sort of. I don't know. Probably just quit caring that much. Because I think he went in there. When he went to the conservation officer, he thought he had a good chance of being arrested and was absolutely shocked when it led to nothing. And then he started seeing the sketches that looked nothing like him. They do too, Gray. I did an overlay. Well, that's your first problem, okay? The, he didn't look anything like him. Hell, he even was at work, but they're right next to his face, and he probably laughed inside. <laughs> I don't look like Tom Cruise, and I don't look like a a, uh, a a hobo. Yeah, everybody saw that picture, and people think, "Look how you know what you know." What I hate the most is people go, "Look how arrogant it is he is with that picture right there," and it's like, dude, there, that picture is everywhere. Every pay, <laughs> he probably has hundreds of pictures of himself with that picture. It's all over the place. He wasn't even conscious of it being back there. It's ridiculous. Like uh, people just want to find every. Oh, look at the way he's holding that cigarette. He must be a psycho. Yeah, well, it's not true, so. He's not laughing now when he's standing in front of the firing squad. He really won't be laughing. Maybe, but he's, all, he's also kind of already sort of old, so. Maybe it was his first one. He didn't really like it, you know. He didn't like, uh, yeah, that's why he's muddy and bloody. He had to scrap. Uh, scrap for it. I'm sure Libby, you know, when she was athletic and she weighed actually weighed 200 pounds. I'm sure she fought pretty hard. I think she would have been a pretty good match. I, I would love to be able to go back in time and see what Richard Allen looked like. Uh, an actual full, like take all of his clothes off and look at all the marks that he had on him. I bet you he was covered with like scratches and stuff like that. Although, I don't know, because if there was really that much of a battle, there would have been a lot more DNA, wouldn't there? Uh, like Libby would have had DNA in her fingernails. I, I mean, I guess he could have taken measures and stuff like that, but huh. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe there's sort of like no skin under the fingernails but still a scratch kind of like through the I don't know what Cindy Hall said no oh, come on Cindy where, where, where you come up with this stuff Cindy it's just just total bogus totally bogus right there what you just typed in Who care? Oh, yeah, Dan Doolin. Dan Doolin said he was suspect number... Uh, bullshit, okay? And, and by the way, why do you keep bringing him up like you know anything about what Dan Doolin's saying? Up, uh, earlier, you said something, too. Huh? What do you mean according to the GHI timeline? Who is this guy here? Hold on a second. Hmm. According to the GHI timeline, Richard Allen hadn't much time to do the killing. No, that's you didn't watch the timeline then, Michael. Uh, my timeline is totally different than that, and uh, you're obviously you're talking about me because I'm GHI. Uh, he had from, let's see, about 2:30 to 3:50. 
That's quite a long time. Yeah, uh, like an hour and 30 minutes. Yeah, maybe. But then why wouldn't there be DNA on Libby's fingers? <laughs> hey, uh, Cindy Hollis, why do you keep typing stuff in? You have no proof of anything that you're saying. And I'm going to have to either block you or you're going to have to send me something because you keep spamming the chat with sort of this I'm, I've got s this inside info stuff. Okay, it's not working for me. I don't like allowing people just to type something in and then people actually, like Patty's commenting back, everybody's commenting back, like they're so interested in what you have to say. And it's not interesting because you're just some random person talking. Okay, if you can send me any kind of proof at all in an email, then I'll, uh, then I'll say, yeah, man, she was really onto something. But you just said something that's ludicrous, that they're now telling the family that he was our main suspect from the beginning. What a load of crap, okay? Not one, if he was their suspect from the beginning, they didn't do one a warrant to search his home all, all these years. Well, they just didn't have, well, what was the, what made him have enough that time? Well, they read the, he was there from, Ah, forget it, man. That doesn't even make any sense. Uh, why not, Beetle Beetle? Are you guys even still here? Is anybody here anymore? <laughs> God, I got to get back to politics, man. You guys were... When I was talking politics, you guys were firing up, uh, chatting back and forth. It was, you know... Uh, Cindy, just give it a rest. Okay, thanks. Cindy, you, you kind of tend to believe a lot of stuff. Yeah, I do. I do. You can't. It's too far off the road, Cindy. Sydney. You see, you sound like a... Um, like one of the know-it-all sort of people that are on in these true crime Facebook groups that think they got all the information and now you're just throwing out random shit like well it was the uh, 127 uh, harvest door video gray yeah well the video uh, look at where the camera is it's it's not even close to the road here okay it's literally I mean it's when when I say close I mean it is it's hundred and six feet from the road and the car is going to go driving by and you're not going to see the license plate, okay? You can just kind of see generally what type of car it is when it drove by. The witnesses saw varying types of cars over here. I know it's in the affidavit, Sydney. I've gone over it like a hundred times. I know it better than you do. Okay, I can tell you that right now. So when it drove by here, they see a specific looking car and it pulls over here and it, uh, other people saw three different vehicles here. They didn't know at probably originally that this car even parked there until they started getting uh, tips in from people. It, it's a nobody, okay? It's, a, it's somebody that won't be communicating in here much longer. Yeah, this is what we have here is the classic Facebook expert. You know, the one that's in there, hears all the little rumor comments and then splices them into a theory. Okay, are they true? Who the hell knows? But I can tell you this, that person doesn't know if they're true or not. I can tell you that right now. Oh, God. Oh, God. 
What are you talking about, Cindy? Can you just do something, uh, talk about something else, Cindy, for a few minutes? So it's okay to use it to confirm Kelsey's story. What about the man that Sue seen? That was that was Richard Allen. And it's what do you mean Sue seen? They they weren't curious as to who he was. Sue made public comments about who Richard looked like. Yeah, Richard Allen is the guy that she saw on platform one with the blue jeans, the jacket, and the hat. What about the man that Sue seen? Yeah, I just call her Sue. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I knew. I knew this. See, I, I told. I already had a gut feeling of exactly what we're dealing with here. Oh God! Now it's who is Sue? Oh Jesus! Oh God! Oh Jesus! Look it. Here we go, everybody. Here comes the rapid speed. We're going to do it again. All right. At 127, uh, Richard Allen's, a vehicle that looks like one of Richard Allen's vehicle, drove by right here, and it and it went this direction. And he says he parked at the, in an old building right here. He called it the uh, agricultural building, some other building, not this one. But this is the only old building that's right here. And he admitted that he parked right there. Okay, and then uh, witnesses drove by, uh, one at 129. Um, actually, it wasn't that, that's when he got there at 129. So a witness came by at 210, and another one at uh, 227. They saw his vehicle backed in against this building here. He says when he got there at 129 that he, you know, we don't know if he got right out of this car right there, but he was walking by and he passed these three girls. The three girls were right over here at. You know, right at the start of the bridge at 1243 at the start of the bridge. Then at 126, they were right here. So as they were sitting there, Richard Allen's car drove by, likely, or they had just started walking. And Richard Allen's car drove by, and then he gets out of his car right here. Then he walks by those very same three girls. Then he comes down like this, and he likely gets to the bridge at around like 150-ish. Right, right. 155, right? Hey, thanks, Cecil Hotel. Okay, so he's standing there. But right in the meantime, when Richard Allen is likely still walking to the start of the bridge, a lady named, I call her Sue, she drives up and parks right here and gets out of her vehicle and walks on the trail. And she walks down. And just two minutes after she got there, Kelsey's car passed the same camera and Libby and Abby got out of the vehicle right here. So they were about three, you know, they were probably walking slower because she was actually exercising and Abby and Libby were just kind of lollygagging around, as my mom would say. And so they're like two or three minutes behind and they're walking down the trail and Sue's way up ahead of them over here. And right before, right at the wood here, um, she says she saw a man wearing the blue jeans, the jacket, the hat, all the whole nine yards, the hoodie and everything standing right here on platform one. Then she turns around right there and starts walking this way. While walking this way, probably around 158-ish, she passes Abby and Libby walking towards the guy that's standing here and he's all by himself. Then once Abby and Libby got here, he likely walked this direction and stood here and watched, maybe even Sue disappear and monitor the traffic while still looking back at Abby and Libby over here. Then Abby and Libby go out on the bridge, and at probably at like 2.03, she took the long shot of the bridge. Then at 2.07, took a shot back this direction with Abby in the picture. And then at 2.13, they're on this side of the bridge, and the Richard Allen individual was on the bridge, walking this direction. And at 2.13, Libby films that person coming right at them, Libby's out at the end of the bridge here with Abby standing behind her, but the video actually shows Lib Abby on the bridge, and he's catching up, and then Abby gets behind Libby, then he comes over, the girls are discussing where to go, uh, she says, Li Abby says, he's got a gun, is that a gun, is that a gun, he's got a gun, something like that, then he says, guys, or, you know, uh, yeah, guys, you know, like, hey guys, down the hill, 
You know, so it was, hey guys, as he's approaching, and then probably 20 seconds later or so, he pulls out a gun and says, down the hill. Then they go down the hill here, and he forces them across the stream, the stream over here, or they made a run for it. He kills them over here. Then at 357, a man, muddy and bloody, is walking this direction uh, somewhere in this area. And uh, at this point, we don't know if he shows back up on this camera. He may have walked back like this. And then he gets to his vehicle and he drives away going this direction. Not another soul saw a man at the bridge that day after uh, between, I would say, 2, uh, about 2 o'clock. And that's it. I mean, nobody saw him. It, later on, there was the flannel shirt guy and uh, Derek was there. And then at 3.57, the killer is back up here, which is Richard Allen, going back to his vehicle. Then he drives this direction, probably back home. So there you go, everybody. Um, I don't know what the hell the, that person was talking about up there. Uh, didn't make any sense. So. Scene. <coughs> it's Saw, yeah. It's not Scene. Hatcher Delphi case, so I missed some things. Sorry. Oh, no problem there. I, this is just the recap of that day, Iris. So, I mean, the Delphi case was in 2017. So it wasn't after the Delphi case. I mean, I guess it, I guess it was after the Delphi case. But, um, you know. So then Derek gets there at 315, which is crazy, right? Derek gets here at 315. Uh, he was just going to be there between 3 and 3.30. He got there at 3.15. And then he talked to the flannel shirt guy who had just got to the start of the bridge. He didn't see anybody. Amazingly, a, a woman named Cheyenne was there on the bridge at like 2.45, which is crazy because that's only probably 30 minutes after the girls were taken down the hill. And the flannel shirt guy was this older guy who has a brother. They I kind of like the maintain the trails and so forth and he walks this way and talks to Derek right here and Derek uh, asks him hey do you see these two girls because no I saw a couple they were arguing by the bridge over there so anyways he goes instead of going to the bridge he walks down this trail here the 505 trail goes down here doesn't see anything walks back up then he gets right back here at 330 and just think like Richard Allen's still right here at 330 and then he walks this direction and gets back here at 4, right when Richard Allen is right here at 357, somewhere in this area, walking muddy and bloody. Derek is back at his car calling people, making sure people are coming to help search. And at that time, Abby and Libby are both dead right here. I mean, that's how wild this, the timing is on this thing. So Derek was there for quite a long time. Wow, that's totally bullshit, Sydney. You know what I think? I bet you this person that's in here was work is like one of... I don't know who you are, Sydney. I don't know. But uh, you're full of crap, okay? I'm just letting you know. Yeah. Did he cut through the cemetery? <laughs> the man he, she saw looked like him, but it wasn't Richard Allen. Ah, oh, give me a break. Jesus. What a joke. It looks like Richard Allen, but it's not Richard Allen, even though Richard Allen said he was there that day. So it was really just a clone of Richard Allen. It just happened to be walking around on the trail. Wow. <laughs> well, it looks like Richard Allen, but it's not Richard Allen, even though Richard Allen says he was there that day and standing on platform one even. So let me see. There was another guy wearing blue jeans, the jacket, and so forth, standing on platform one that nobody else saw, and it just wasn't him. Uh, <coughs> anyways, I, I'm gonna get out of here. This has turned into a, it's just it's like arguing with a brick wall. Yeah, he said he stood there on platform one. 
He does he and he says he doesn't remember seeing her. Okay. Well, it's just everything's died down in here anyways. I'm gonna go do I gotta do something else. So Yeah, it's just it's like talking to uh, you know a conspiracy theorist. You, you can't argue with them because what they'll say is something like this. Oh yeah, well I heard this person say this, and this is what happened. And how do you refute them, other than it just doesn't make sense? Oh, uh, you know. You guys can keep talking if you want. I'm gonna get a kind of use the restroom. Be back in a minute. But I tell you what, if we get up to 500 again, I'm, I'll donate another. Because I don't do the, I'm not doing the day show on the weekends here, so we'll do the another five memberships. All right, we're only 34 dollars and 10 cents away. What's the difference between those two faces? One's like a half frown, the other one's a... Thanks, Jessica Schubach. <laughs> Guess not, Jessica. Guess not. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there hasn't been a time where I discuss this case where I don't go, oh, God, he's guilty as hell. Richard Allen. Guess what, everybody? Richard Allen is the killer, okay? Two buck wave, anyone? I know this is confusing. Hey, thanks, Teresa. I know it's hard to believe, everybody, but Richard Allen is the killer in this case. I know it's very difficult to get it. And I know it's, it's, it's cool and fashionable to be on the opposing side because it's really fun to come up with conspiracies and all these wild thoughts and everything. But I have an advantage over you guys. And you know what that is? Everybody, guess what? Richard Allen was arrested for the murders. <laughs> it's wild. It's crazy. You guys, listen, listen. He was actually arrested for the murders. It's insane. I know, I know I'm going out on the limb here, but he's guilty, man. He did it. It's weird. Okay? Everybody likes Cindy. <laughs> Thanks, Georgina Stolker and Amber. 
Cindy's like my uh, pesky, like a sister that just like goes out of her way to just. I don't see Cindy though, Sherry. <laughs> Did she disappear? Thank you, Kathy Chapin and Danielle. We're almost there, almost there. But Cindy, like, will buy a conspiracy theory almost immediately and believe it. And I have to, like, be the one that convinces her, hey, listen, listen, come on. What do you mean she's on the bridge? What are you talking about? That's great music, Sass of Frath. You're the only one that doesn't like it. Ah, uh, he, Blues doesn't cough as much, so he's doing a little bit better. I have to give him these little pills, you know. He seems to like it. You know, runs around. Thank you, Krista Brenner. All right, we got, I think we're $10 short of the, once we get there, bam! Five memberships. Oh, there goes my stomach. Oh, there's been weird people going after Cindy in here? Where? What are you talking about? Well, those are just probably the trolls, you know. She doesn't have to worry about anything. What do you mean she's getting locked out? What do you mean? Did she send me an email? I don't know what you mean, she's getting locked out. Yeah, it is potty break music. Your account's pretty new there, Sue Dunn. <laughs> Sue told investigators that the man she saw looked a lot like Jimmy Duvall. And sure enough, Richard Allen resumed... <laughs> oh, give me a break, Sierra. Where do you guys come up with this crap? Okay? Where do you come up with this shit? Are you guys just, like, lingering around on Facebook somewhere with these people just, you know, like, ooh, super sleuths? You know, uh, it, it's crazy. It's Looney Tunes stuff, okay? I'm, I don't need to, uh, we've already heard it. Listen, I've been doing the Delphi case for six years on the day they went, night they went missing, okay? And we've all heard of all these people, okay? We don't need to look out. Richard Allen is the guy on the bridge. He's the killer, okay? Thank you. Why'd you hear? Why'd you hide Daryl Montgomery? Oh, you hid them, Daryl Montgomery. Um, I see. Well, where is Cindy? Is she trapped somewhere or what? I don't know what you guys are talking about. I didn't see anything regarding Cindy. And she hasn't she hasn't emailed me or anything, so it must not be a big deal. Oh hey, thank you to uh, Tammy on PayPal there. Super chat wouldn't send. The eighteen year old creep was here illegally for less than two months and now we get to pay to incarcerate him for the rest of his life. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather somebody do it, because if not, he'd probably be languishing around in another country still killing people. Drama! Ocean waves. 
Where is that? They're coming to take me away. <laughs> Drama. Drama. No, you but you are, Sue. You're you're not telling the truth about anything that you're saying. You're just listening to Facebook groups. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm talking to the right person. <laughs> just because you are unaware doesn't ma mean I'm crazy. Just remember that saying, that saying, Gray. Right, but here's the thing is, I'm doing a show tonight, and these people come out of nowhere from the crazy Facebook social media sites and are claiming all kinds of stuff. Duval has nothing to do with the murders, okay? Right, I, that's what I've said multiple times, is that Sue is the best witness and most important w witness out there. I've said it 50,000 times when we've covered it. She saw the three girls. She saw the car backed in. She saw Richard Allen. She saw Abby and Libby. Uh, she, she's pretty much like the key witness, honestly. I mean, she puts everything together. And just because you claim you're aware, Sue, uh, doesn't mean you're aware of a damn thing, okay? Now, if you send me some proof somewhere, then I'll say, wow, it sounds like she was really onto something. But if, if it's just because somebody else told somebody that told you and all that, it means nothing to me. I have to see it uh, as a source for myself or a document of some sort, and then it might mean something. But uh, you just coming in and blabbing away, trying to act really sleuthy and cool, uh, isn't gonna, it's not gonna cut it, right? So. All right, you guys, we're 8.50 away. We can do it, man. We can do it. Just like Koberger is guilty. Yeah. Yeah. Rex Horman, Brian Koberger, Richard Allen, all did the crimes they've been accused of doing. There is no doubt. Uh, people are just trying to derail the show. I don't know what you know, anything about what was going on with Cindy or anything. Didn't see it. What were they saying? Thank you, Christy Kazi. 200 cents. Rude writer's stuff. Hey, thank you very much, AC. There we go. We did it. Hold on. We're going to go do it now. WNC Granny. WNC. <laughs> hey, there's the replay. All right. And here we go. Hey, Gray, you've been so patient tonight. Some of these people don't realize how lucky they are because you have been patient. <laughs> yeah, I think I've been pretty good, if you ask me. You know, there's been a couple rude people. See, people, here's what people think. See, sometimes we get people in here that are members that are rude as hell um, on a night. And then I call them out and time them out. And then people think, look how mean Gray is to his subs. And it's like, hey... I don't care who, you know, it doesn't matter who you are. If you act a certain way, then that's how it's going to be. Now, you can say the same thing backwards and Chewbacca? disappear and not come around. It, it, it's just what it is, right? Thank you, Michael Cadell. So we got uh, Sassafras, Kath. 
Uh, Angelia Wilcox, Elaine, Boop. <laughs> Make sure to look up those dates, everybody. And Carla Hayes. <laughs> I think I have been a little bit patient tonight, don't you think? A little bit? Not too bad? I'm not really sure how to deal with people that come in and go. Oh, this person said this. I bet you that was the same person twice. Just use a different name. Well, I mean, it's, you know, like sometimes if I'm off base on something, like sometimes I don't read the chat correctly and I misconstrue something. A lot, most of the time when I catch that later, I apologize. I'll sometimes I email people. I'm going to give Blue some of his medicine here in a minute. Again, I, I keep hearing him. Is there anybody here? Uh, you guys uh, get to see my where we're at on the office that I'm doing? I'm, what I'm going to buy is those little uh, monitor arms. So I don't. they're not going to be monitors sitting on the table anymore. It's going to be... Uh, hold that side. Yeah, it's almost finished now, so it's getting there. I think it's got another, at the end of the month, it'll be totally finished. It could be quicker if people were just there work doing it, but you have to wait for, the electricians have to put in the final, you know, like the plates on the walls and everything. But, uh. So here we go, look, look at it. So this is what it looks like inside this place. That was a garage. <laughs> I mean, it just this crappy garage. Now there's a door that comes in. And it's like that. There's still the uh, porta potty outside, but they're still there. That's one of the painters, <coughs> I think. There's blue. And that that's just to be a door that went into the garage there. And that's like just going into the door, a laundry room right here, there's a bathroom right here, and then there's where the office is. Pretty sweet, huh? Yep. Yeah, I kind of do like rain. <laughs> I was going to get rain cloud, but it, it was so dark, it just, uh, I changed my mind at the last minute before you got it you only put a little a sample on the wall and then you know I just had to quickly we got the peach colors in the bathroom and laundry room a really light peach mm -hmm. all right so for the people who came in here claiming all these things make sure to send me an email Proving what you said, not that you heard it here from somebody. Okay, I need to see where you see it, where you, how it was proven to you. Okay, and if we don't get it, then it just, you know, it is what it is. And I, it, it doesn't it almost seem like. Why are, why are all the comments being made sort of anti it being Richard Allen somehow? It almost feels like you got the it's the same wackos that think it's Ron Logan or somebody else coming in trying to create a narrative that it's not Richard Allen. Yeah, the floors are uh, this cool it's not really linoleum, it's some other thing, but it's really hard and then we put it on top of this pad that's a little bit quiet. <laughs> uh. 
Ah, ooh, man. My eye just looked at a light. What don't you get, Bridget? That they don't, why they do it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't either. Right. Uh, well, the, I think the only case right now that's currently going on that everybody's on the same page is Herman. Right? But, but I don't know why. This case and Koberger are just as damning, if not more. You know, it's amazing. Yeah, they aren't, they aren't going to send me anything. It'll be more a screenshot of somebody saying something and then saying, well, that's the cousin of his favorite friend's dog walker's aunt's niece. And then I'm supposed to go, oh, that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, will be good for the family. I did the same for RFK. Huh? The time lapse in charging the perp. One difference. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. I mean, the 10 years didn't... The clock starts ticking once Herman is named. It was six years in the Delphi case. It's just that people are... Yeah, yeah, look, he's a big ogre booger, uh, boogie man. He's it, man. He's it. Yep. And so, and I totally think he's, he's a killer in that one, too. It's obvious, you know. And, you know, here's, I, I, I know what the answer is. I just figured it out. The answer is, is in the Horman case, there's a ton of stuff to dig into. Things to, like, you know, think about and try to find who else did he kill I mean let's look at this let's look at that so it, it occupies people's minds in the Delphi case uh, once the, he's arrested all these people who had theories there's a lot more theorizing going on they either want to keep their theory or it ran out of stuff to talk about as soon as the probable cause is out it's just dead to rights so they're like yeah yeah I, I, I need something I need something hey let's come up with a whole nother angle here See, there's no need for uh, coming up with an angle in the Lisk case because there's so much other stuff you can try to figure out. But I can tell you, once that's all that all runs out, they'll start wondering, you know, did he really do it? I mean, it was just a cell phone. Maybe there was a guy that was just trying to set him up, and he was... Yeah, it shouldn't have taken six years. Oh, yeah, what was the that, that was one of the comments said earlier. Law enforcement is now saying they're telling everybody that Richard Allen was the main suspect all those years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does anybody believe that? That doesn't even make sense. And, and why invent a story about a conservation officer if he was the suspect all those years, you would just say, you know, he's always been on our radar. And then when we took another look at it, it's just, come on. They, they looked horrible saying that. Huh? Another pooch needs me? What do you mean? His neighbor, the conservation officer, told her that. Huh? I don't get it. Yeah. Uh, this account, I think the judge has to put a stop to the defense. Hmm. Person said that Dan was his neighbor. Oh, right. Uh huh. Well, of course, Dan's going to say, hey, he was the number one. If that is the guy. Like, we don't really even know if he is the person, right, that 
So let's say he is the guy, though, and he said that to her. Wouldn't he just say that because it looks so horrible <laughs> that, uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's true. Maybe it's true. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Now, if he's the main suspect all these years, why do they need to invent a story how they were just digging through the files again and stumbled upon Richard Allen? Uh, why is that? And what would have held them... What changed where they all of a sudden were able to do a warrant to go to his house? So it took him six years? Was it something like, if that story is true, Kagan Klein information led to the probable cause but guess what when you read the probable cause document it doesn't mention kagan klein whatsoever it talks about um that they just stumbled upon him um i'm not you know here's the one thing about the probable cause though it's um, like what allowed them to like get what made him allow them to go to his house the first time have we ever seen that one I don't think that one's been released yet. What allowed them to go to his house the first time? Just the conservation officer interview? Hmm, that's sort of interesting. Gotta look into that. There's no way to look into it though, but hey, that'd be cool. <coughs> I think we saw the... What document do we have? Hold on, let me, let me go over there. Yeah, that, that Exhibit A... No, that's not what it's called. That's a different one. Hold on. Motion order prevent parties. Yeah, this is. Um, I can't remember if that. I don't know if that was a probable cause that gave us this document. Right here. Yeah, Blue's just doing his coughing thing. He's got his pill, though. So. He'll be okay in a few minutes. We can see a T-cell logic. If people aren't responding, it just means they weren't interested. Okay? <laughs> um, just like what happens to me. I'll be talking away, I look in the chat, people are talking about what flavor bubble gum they ate. You know, and it's like, oh man, must not have been interesting. What happened to this account stuff? Message retracted, retracted. Oh boy, Jesus. Yeah, do you guys anybody really think he's going to have his trial on October 2nd? I don't remember what that original document was called. I mean, what it, what it was here. The one that broke it all down for us here. I mean, it's such a great affidavit. I think it was an affidavit, right? Is that what it was? But I'm trying to... I want to know what the probable cause document 
not probable cause, but the search warrant request. That would be a huge one to know because what was it? Because reading that report wouldn't be enough for probable cause, right? Or to search his house. There has to be something else. And see, that's where I th that's where I think Keegan Klein comes in, and that's what led to the search of Richard Allen's house is through Keegan Klein, and we aren't getting to see that information. All right. Anyways, that's it. That's it. So. Oh, and by the way, and you know the other case that was up in Maryland, I did want to bring that up. This one that people were wondering if it was related to right there. Rachel Morin says, Maryland teacher vanished just days before slain mom of five. Rachel Morin disappeared. Okay, well, the thing is they, they arrested her son on unrelated charges but with no bail. So I think they've they're got the right person. Because people thought maybe she was related somehow. This lady right here, remember? And so today they arrested her son. And so probably there was likely something going on there. It didn't, it didn't seem like it was going to be uh, related at all because of her age and just it just didn't match. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, thank you guys for reaching the goal, and then some. Thanks to Ali79, Kathy Friedmaker, Kelly Snyder with the double cat eye, enjoying the peace and quiet while my husband and son are in Italy or er, in Indy at the Colts and Bears game. American Lady Kathy Chapin, Callie Gal three. Waiting for her storm to hit. Jeannie Gayagoy. Good Juju. Texas Annie. Tammy Morell. Annabelle Stealth. Cali Gal 3. Simple Me. And then Bale, a new member. Now Linda Howell. Or Bali, not Bale. <laughs> that was Bali, new member. And then Linda Howell, 44 months. Emerald Roses. Linda Howell was uh, super chat. RF. Deborah Blum Rogers. She laughed. Allie Cake. Jason Freer. AC. Kami. Sean Pellegrino. Allie 79. East 2 Hig. Elaine. Christy Kazi. Elaine. Daphne. Tammy Morell. Just Junie. Brittany. Daff M, Iris Rainbow, Cindy Leon, but gray, and then Cindy J, buy yourself something nice. <laughs> Just Junie, Daff M, Tammy Morell, Diane S, Sardines for You, Kathy Chapin, Never Maiden, Bail, even though modding while you talk politics is not fun. <laughs> Cheryl, Latasha Hamblin, Sam Fadden, uh, Latasha Ham Hamblin became a new member, Kelly Snyder, Cat Eye, then uh, Cecil Hotel, Lisa Valenzuela, Jessica Schubach, Teresa, Georgina Stoliker, Amber Maiden, Kathy Chapin, Danielle, Krista Brenner, Daphne, Mary Anderson, Little Darren, or Dar, let's see, Little Darlin, a.k.a. Mrs. L. Christy Kazi, A.C., WNC Granny, and then I gifted five memberships, and Michael Cadell, who sounds like he was in law enforcement at one time, so thank you for your service there. And by the way, I hope you guys don't mind the way I am when there's people that come in claiming all kinds of stuff. 
Gray, are we supposed to believe the FBI didn't pull up the owner of every 40 caliber pistol owner in Carroll County and didn't see Richard Allen's name showed Sue a picture of him? Yeah, I, I, yeah. They, I mean, so what, what are you suggesting, Sierra? And is that even your face? I mean, a Sierra, and then you have a face that you don't seem to match. Um, yeah. So I guess, I hope you guys don't mind when there's people that, like that that show up in here that are just coming in and claiming all these different things. I, I just, I can't sit there and entertain them because it's a completely futile moment. It, it could turn out to be true, but what are you supposed to do with that? You know, people claiming stuff and you're going to go, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know who you're talking about or where you got the information from. So while people, and what may, bothers me, this is what bothers me. Have you ever noticed that when people type in those kinds of things, the sheer number of people responding show you exactly why there's creators out there that put out that stuff. Because you look, hey, what are you talking about? And they all keep responding to the same person. Because it was something, you know, like, wow, this is great. So they just keep commenting, hey, can they want to give them to the answer more questions? And so that's why creators do those types because look at the response that got. It was unbelievable. So up here you get the gray. Are we really supposed to believe the FBI didn't pull up the owner of every 40 caliber pistol owner in Carroll County and didn't see Richard Allen's name? Showed Sue a picture of him. Huh? I, I don't know. I mean, it, they, it seems like they bungled stuff. <laughs> I mean, what do, what do we... Um, are we supposed to believe that law enforcement <clears throat> was aware the whole time and made themselves look terrible by claiming they just stumbled upon the information again later when they should have actually been on top of this guy the whole time? Right. I could see some creative magic going on to try to make it seem that way because it's so horrendous. If that's what you want to believe. Well, a lot of times I'm not nicer, AC, but then people get mad and go, look how gray he's abusive to everybody and he's just... I mean, give me a break. Good Lord. And if you're going to come in on YouTube and start blasting out a bunch of crap, then expect somebody to, you know, to chirp back, you know. Well, well thank you, Patty L. Yeah. <whistles> Anyways. Thank you guys very much. Thank you to uh, also out there to it was uh, Tammy Morell on PayPal. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Talking back to somebody saying that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen isn't abusive at all. It's just it is what it is. Nobody cares. If you're that thin skinned you shouldn't be anywhere near uh, Facebook or I mean YouTube or anything I mean just forget it okay and believe me you guys all say whatever the hell you want to say too and I don't go you're abusive oh my god you said great that was stupid oh you're you know it's just it's ridiculous <laughs> god you know I'm just gonna be me and uh, here's how simple it is uh, like if, if you came back the next day, it would be a totally different show again. Nobody would even care or remember or care at all about the show before. Um, but if you don't like the show, then it's so simple. You just don't have to watch it. It's weird. You just literally go somewhere else and watch something else. It's almost like this is how it is. People really like the way I do it. So they're so angry 
that they got mad and don't like watching, they don't like my personality, but wish somebody else would do the same exact same thing, but had a personality that they liked. So then they get really angry at me. <laughs> but how about you just, it is what it is. At least you're, you're going to get somebody who's trying to put out stuff that's a known fact. And, you know, if I came across the stuff that these same people are claiming they have, and I figured it out and spoke to somebody and believed them, I would, and I was able to share it, I would. But I'm not going to take the word from some random person showing up in a chat claiming something. Does that make sense? I hope so. Because that, that's definitely, you just can't do it that way. <clears throat> that's right, it's a house. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, anyways, thank you guys for being here tonight, and thank you for your generosity and helping support the channel. Allows me to, uh, you know, make an income on here. Uh, there is no ad revenue on streams like this, um, so you guys are it. And also, uh, we just picked up another case: a three thousand dollar identification of a tr baby who was thrown out of a. Uh, a window and I'll just you know of a vehicle and it wasn't even a name the child doesn't even have a name likely but we'll be able to identify the mother and uh, you know there'll be some consequences hopefully and so um, you know out of the income from the channel I'll be paying for that at the end of the month and other various charities and that's what you guys allow to do uh, allow me to do that um, uh, with the income and we've already done, I think, 36,000 this year so far, right? Is that right? 36,850. That's pretty damn good. You know, so. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. And as I always say, until next time, be safe out there. And anybody out there just not feeling good or something, I hope you feel better. Also, uh, if you're in a bad weather situation, hope you... Get through that one safe. Caligo 3 and the rest of you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. And be safe out there. And a one and a two and a three and a four. Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now. And during this whole time, I have not seen one person. Not even that one day. Not even one. Dissecta. Like reject uh, I'm, I'm a certified human lie detector. detector. Gonna, gonna get, get you. you on a stretcher. If they try to play me like a low projector, crime sector is my nectar. Well, that's the way I'm gonna, gonna give another lecture. Crime collector, free collector, and I'm always gonna be a pop protector. Full of flicker, interceptor, meet a venom, meet a venom specter with a vector on his pector with a respector. Just remember, I've a temple fucking checker. I have no agenda, I'm no pretender, and I'll send it to your strip without the blender. And in the end of that, I'm gonna, gonna send ya on a mission to reveal the true offender. <coughs> yeah, so I'll just get right back to. Hey, work. also everybody, hey, thanks for uh, like these little question shows are pretty good. I mean, we should probably do this more often on. You know some other cases that are out there just kind of like come up with a whole bunch of questions I like to just sit around and think of the questions in order and then it makes it seem like it seems like uh, when you're done discussing the questions you know people seem to have a better understanding of everything I do anyways it makes you go hmm and you read some of the comments and you know I like it so cool everybody we'll see you guys tomorrow I th in the evening. I do have a golf tournament though in the day so hopefully um, we win but I haven't played for like a month and a half so we'll have to see. See you guys later. Oh, did Mark show up again? Oh my god. Oh, holy crap. Alright, see you guys later. Have you lost the last three brain cells or do you just have cabbage for brains? Hey, thanks, Ashley Hansen. Wow. This guy may be like, like the, the dumbest, dumbest person, person on, on the, the face, face of the earth. earth. Come on, man. What's wrong with you?
Did you hear what I said? Yeah, I spent an hour listening to that chatter. There's mosquitoes the size of bald eagles in that dead gum swamp. Five brain cells, four aren't working. You know, that's just one step above stupid. Huh? It's the house! Wow, I got a comment from Mark. Listening to seven hours of police chat is fed up looking for Carlo's arrest. On a cold night in hell. Which is never cold in hell because it's hell. Mark commented. He saw Zozo show up to the show. And he said hello. Moments later, Zozo said hello back. And how the sparks flew into the air. And the smile on Mark's face was something to behold. It was absolutely incredible. Stay tuned for the next episode of The Young and grabable. <laughs> All right, everybody. Hey, see you guys later. Okay, I'm still here. Okay, bye. Bitch, please. Dude. Oh my god. Awkward. Drama. Don't ask dumbass questions. Are you angry at me? And grits for brains here, shoot scene. Did you hear what I said? Breaking up is hard to do. Oh, I'm sorry, Mark and Zozo. <laughs> that would fall under the category of something bad. <laughs> yes, it would. Oh, yeah, everybody. Hey, Gray, I love this music. It's really cool. I know, it was written for you, Mary Lou. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love this music. It's the greatest music. I love this music. I love this music. Oh, I love this music, and you will too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. And uh, you, 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 you love it too. <laughs> did you say, what did you say right there? You said effing now? Is that what you said? I did, but it's part of the song, man. Oh, good lord, everybody. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Be safe out there. <laughs> good night, everybody. Yeah. <laughs>